love hate relationship mainly just hate relationship here in america black people hate cops black people loathe cops and black people that become cops they loathe them even more but there's one thing that stick out inside my mind when i think about people who need the cops the most people inside the hood black people so you can hate the cops all you want to but everybody hates the cops until they need them so here's to you 911 dollars keep on down man a lot of has really changed in america right you know you you got people questioning um and asking is marriage slavery right um you know what i'm not going to say it's slavery i'm not even going to say it's really close right um what i'm going to say is depending on how much i make and how often I make it, you might have to be a slave to me. I won't ever call it that. I won't even say that in your face. But just know when I'm talking to my homies and I'm telling them I'm getting gawk gawk when I want, she fixing these meals and taking care of everything the way I like it with no complaints. You just don't know your slave. Tia Mari decided to leave her husband after she said he was a good man and he was a good father. After the world saw that he was a good man and good father what does that say about modern women that are willing to leave good men and good fathers and go explore the world that says that you are shiftless and nigger that you don't know what you want because when you had it you chose to go try to do something new and now she's mad because men aren't courting her like her ex-husband did that's no longer you know uh, present meaning like people just don't court each other anymore and, it's and she's finding out that all she's good for is being bagged and tagged and released back into the wild so here's the useless and niggly women who choose to leave your man and go get bagged down and let other men run up in them you have now made yourself the hole that you always wanted to be toodles Yo, so check it out. Now, you got uh, what it is, uh, Tia out here, Maori, left her a whole good man. Um, and she's hitting the dating street strong. She's living, loving life. Go, girl, go, girl, go, girl, right? You're out here. Now you get all the woods you want, right? You can build a whole just log cabin with all the woods you get. And that's spectacular. But this is my thing. She left a good man. That's unfortunate for the good man. But what she's done is given all the bad guys hope. Me, I'm not worried about it. I'm a good guy. Mr. Life's a good guy. You know, he's claimed I'm claimed. But for all you bad guys, congratulations. There's one more wild one on the loose for you to go ahead, tackle, bag down, and send back into the wild after you tag her for the next guy. So congratulations, good bad guys. You just came up. I really, really wish that as black people, whether you are a black conservative or you're black liberal, that we would get to the place where we would stop seeing ourselves as negative all the time. Everything we do um, that because we don't agree with it, we see ourselves as negative. We put ourselves down. We put ourselves below other cultures and everything like that. We got our own cultures. We did it. We did it. And that's who we are. We, we created our own lane. We did it. A lot of other cultures are trying to Im imitate what we do. Let's let's uh, celebrate that. I think we should celebrate the way that we are, the culture that we are. It's about abnegation versus abnegation, right? Abne abnegation is turning and walking away from your role and responsibility. Abnegation is about pushing back and saying, no, I reject that. It's my job to accept whatever you're offering as a woman. No. I expect that you offer something that is worth me committing to. I expect that the way that you conduct yourself as a woman requires me to give you the love that you require. So as opposed to abdicating your role as a man, I would say abnegation is the way that you want to go. Operate with abnegation, push back against whatever it is that they're offering you if it doesn't look like what it is that you expect as a man have your expectations set them high and then don't turn and walk away from that and then you'll force her to be the woman that you 90 percent of prisoners come from single mothers what does that tell me that tells me that america has a problem america america has a problem with men 
a man committing violent acts. Men doing things wrong. Men coming from single families to where men don't have any real direction. I can't put all this on the single mothers, but what I can do is say that these men that come from single mothers have lack of discipline. They don't understand the system and they refuse to understand the system, so they get put inside the system. So what should the system do? Keep these men going inside the system. That's not like an endless conundrum to where men continue to go to prison. So what should happen with these single mothers? That's another question that America needs to answer, but I don't think America is in the business of answering that question because America makes a lot of money from men going to prison. So here's to you, America. Keep these shiftless and niggly men going to prison. It comes to um, thinking about uh, men and women and the implications on our society in terms of women who don't want to date down or men of a certain status. What, why are you wanting to be in a relationship or getting married? Is it because of status or love? Because sometimes they won't overlap. Sometimes you may love somebody that might not have everything you want or desire. Sometimes somebody might not have what you want or desire, but they will pull you to the status that you do desire. So you have to make a decision. I remember a song, what you need in life, money, power, respect. Money, power, respect, right? That was the hook. Well, this is the problem in this age where some women are getting the money, they're getting the power. What they are doing is losing respect for men who work hard and might not be on their status. Grown people and breakups. Grown people need to break up better than young people. Young people, when they break up, there's usually chaos, mayhem, fighting, backbiting, scratching, and a couple of blows being thrown and some hair being pulled. But as you get older, you kind of learn that, that that's not the way to go about it. So what some grown people do when they want to avoid a bad breakup, they think- Come to the League of Extra Ordinary Gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Allow me to introduce you to man's planation. We got Mr. Life. Mr. Life. Can't forget about the bad Gemini. The bad Gemini. We in the building. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about what's been going round. What's been going down. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about what's been going round. What's been going down. Since a kid, I was lost in this man's world. Thinking life is about money and beautiful girls. Raised off in the struggle. Blessed to have my mother. Blessed to have my father. But nobody really loves you. Started being up on the scene before I hit my teens. Think I started smoking weed before I turned 13. And I had a billion dreams just like Dr. King. But my dreams were never what my dreams seemed. From juvenile detention when they wanted to lynch me. To the chain gang slaving me. I'm locked in prison. That's how support be crazy. Be careful making babies. You gon' have to pay a price to love them and raise them. Um, well, sir, thank you. Next caller on the line. Next. Mr. Life, man, help me out, man. I have problems with my old lady, man. Cross down, I got a girlfriend and all. I'm trying to figure it out, man. Get this thing together, man. Help me out. My name is Jesse, and I'm from South Florida. And I've been trying to figure out why the sun rises and sets the way it do. I'm from Buford, man, and I love y'all's show, man. I appreciate you guys, man. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. Preaching the word of man. Don't forget the ties by leaving your comments and your share. Man's for nations. Figuring this out. Figure out. Let's figure it out. Figuring is out. We discuss the laws, history, religion, finances, the government, politics. Everything. Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out.
Ah, we are back again, everyone. How you doing tonight? How you doing tonight? I got my smooth voice on. We got everybody else coming up in here. We got CB Smith coming in. We got Charlie. We have CB Smith. We have Mr. T here with us. We got Bad Gemini coming in. Hey, man, let me get this thing out. I keep forgetting to add back that button, man. Why do I con continuously forget about the add back my applause button? It drives me crazy. Everyone let me know if you can hear the music playing in the background. You know, we're going to get straight into the show tonight because a lot of us tired, man. And I know I'm tired up inside this joint. So i got to get the energy up. So before I do all that, Mr. T, how you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm good, black man. I'm good. I can't complain. I can't complain about your microphone and your internet. Yes, I can. I can definitely complain it's about your drama. You all, yeah, I'm pretty it's, sure you do not actually have it on your microphone. You have it on your camera. I mean, you have it on the microphone on your All right, laptop. let me, let me, let me fall back and let me get it right. <laughs> Hold on. You, all right, God, well, you don't have it. to fall back, but just, just go ahead and fall back if you need to, or you can just stay up and fix, play with it. Do whatever you need to do. Tonight's right. show, uh, this is tonight's show 132. We talking about the real housewives. Uh, there's a real housewife that doesn't, that doesn't want light skinned kids. Anton Daniels said pro blacks ain't that quite pro black and are modern women toxic and much more. We're going to get into the promo and we'll come right back with the cologne with fragrance review of tonight then we'll get into the thick of the show so i hope everyone is doing lovely so because you are now welcome to figuring ish out M mr t you got it right i think i do what about oh, that yeah. oh there you go you are much better my friend you are much and we got cb smith coming on up coming on up and pause he coming up the real pause no diddy <laughs> yeah that's diddy <laughs> The show oh, just got started. Don't don't you get started. <laughs> we got the no daddy coming in here. So let's get to the tonight's promo. We'll come right back with the cologne review and we'll get into the thick of the show tonight. This is Mr. Life. Let's get to it. This week on figuring it out. Let's get to it. I do have a fear of having light skin. Ooh. Do you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson, you know, that women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? <laughs> Most people that label themselves pro-black are hypocrites. They'll tell you just because I'm pro something doesn't mean I'm against it. 56% of marriages end in divorce. You now have a technology that fails 76% of the time. That well... That is not the one that I released, I think, but it got the job done. There was a lot of things missing from that. I don't know if my video editor did the right thing there. But nevertheless, you all see some of the things that we're talking about tonight, and we're going to get straight into the cologne review. And then we're going to get straight to the thick of the show right now because, I man, I have, I have a feeling this is going to be an absolutely great show for you all tonight. And what tonight we are talking about on the fragrance review we are going to be talking about, well, first of all, I am Mr. Life, your Duke King. I help men look good, smell good, and be great. And how I do that is by giving you clothing advice, how to dress style advice, and also give you fragrance advice, and also life advice on how you can be the best man that you can be. So tonight, we, going, we are going to be talking about a cologne or perfume that I definitely love, and this is from the House of Latafa, and, it's called, and this is called Kia L. Fuse. Kiat L. Fusen. And I tell you, this is absolutely a great scent. This has pineapple. This is gonna have a this is gonna have a this is gonna have a little bit of pineapple, raspberry. It's gonna be a summer scent there. It's, this is a true summer scent that you definitely want to try out. It has some hints of spices in there as well. Now, this is an alteration of a dupe. They already made a cologne of of a original cologne and they dupe that cologne. So the the original one is Keed L. Fearsome and that is in the black and this is inside the white. The black one is a dupe of Cree Adventist completely. This right here is definitely a mix of Cree Adventist and, and Virgin Island water, which is another great Cree, Cree scent. Now for the dupe score, this is gonna be about a 650 if you wanna look, 
compare this as in being a Creed Adventist. It's nowhere near Creed Adventist, but it's it's a mimic or a replica of it, but it's a mixture of Creed Adventist and Virgin Island water. So for the score of how this smells, this is definitely a 18. That all that vanilla, all that pineapple, all that raspberry, all those great smells just wind in the wind together. And this is you walking on the beach with a with the most attractive woman that's out there, and then all the other women smell you, and then they get a whiff of this, and all of them don't even care about her being there because they want to be with you. You can be 400 pounds, bare belly, walking out on the beach, and all the women will be attracted to you. Yes, yes, you can have hair on your chest and hair on your back, fellas, and they will still come up to you and ask you what you're wearing. It's up to you to do what you have to do after that. Get this right here. This is called Kid L. Fiercer. Fiercer, uh, something like that. It's that's that is something that's along the lines of Arabic, but hey, go out, check it out. It's a great scent. And I think we still don't have BG with us right now. And but we still we do have Mr. T doing one thing. I'm pretty sure he's checking the draft right now. I know he's checking the draft. <laughs> I ain't checking no draft. I got messed up over here. Uh, I was about to ask you who who went first. We, we kind of already know who went first. <laughs> no man, ain't checking no draft. What's going on though? What's yeah, going yeah. on, people out there? Yeah, I know you checking the draft. You you gonna be tra checking the draft all night. We usually do a ain't uh, no draft. What's wrong with you? I thought the draft was tonight. It is. I don't know. Oh, I don't man, watch football this... until um. I don't watch football until it's time. Your to watch internet football. ain't good enough to watch. check the draft. Let's start there. <laughs> wow. So I don't know what wow. draft he be checking. Wow. Only it's draft he dealing wow. with. Wow. I hope he got working AC. This That's nigga, the only draft he need to this, be focused on this, right now. This African just come out of left yeah. field talking junk. Let me tell you, he looked like ashy oil. I didn't even know that was possible. I was that, that that's a contradiction within itself ashy oil like the two don't even mix but he's been able to pull off oil looking ashy but anyway let's go ahead let's like... man let me ask you all this before we get into it we're going to jump straight into it right now let me ask you all this question how many black people you know that have a problem or a issue with 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 anything skin complex i think um um i really do believe internally we all do so you do that's a lie i do internally BG comes and in. i like my i like my brown the, color he's talking reckless listen because put a, a light skin nonsense. baby put a light skin baby uh right next to a darker skin baby they can have the same kind of hair complexion and all this other kind of stuff but people are going to say that light skin baby is is more purity from is beautiful more beautiful than that darker child it depends where you so at I in think the world eternally. i'm gonna leave it at that that ain't universal depends where you at in the world i disagree that's the i have a i have a dark skin child and i have a i have a light bright child one that is so after one one is one is lighter than me my oldest is lighter than me and my youngest is darker than her mother so they both took out after, you know, their parents, but, uh, you know, one was a little lighter and one was, one was a little darker than a dark parent. And I can tell you unequivocally, it happens all the time that when I show the photos, I, you know, everyone tells me how beautiful my girls are, but it, it's not uncommon for them to single my, my youngest out, who is the darker of the two. Hey, they have they sing her, anecdotal. When you say they sing her evidence. out, what you mean? They sing her out and said that um, she's How beautiful prettier. She is. Or... Oh, okay. Real life anecdotal experience going on around right now with CB Smith, yeah. and I, we want to acknowledge CB Smith for being dirty red. I never heard the term dirty red until I moved to New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was like it was like they just don't call them light skin or red they have to call it they there is a distinct color where they call certain lights call certain lighter skin men dirty dirty red and i was looking like what does dirty red mean <laughs> well when i thought about cb smith i was just like dirty red i get it because it's light skin but it has a little tint or like some redness or orange 
it's orange almost, or, but it's weird, man. But I was just like, these women are crazy. They're like, oh, yeah, baby, he dirty red. I like that. I'm like, dirty red? What the hell? <laughs> what you mean this man don't bathe? <laughs> that, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> well, my skin, if you look at my skin tone, you can clearly see that, like, I'm not I'm not as light as I am red. I'm definitely I'm definitely red. Like you can see the red in my skin tone. You know, it's, there's a red hue and tint to my skin. But I I, I don't know about that dirty part. <laughs> That's what they call it. They call it dirty red when you not when you just not light skin but you have that little red tone to it. They call it dirty red. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's part of a gumbo recipe. Dang. I've heard it be- I've heard it before. I've just never been called that before, but yeah, I, I know where you're coming from. I'm like dirty red. All right. Have y'all heard of a Candace Dillard Bassett of Real Housewives of Potomac who married a white man and wants kids and has a problem with her kids being brown skinned. So let's watch and figure out, keeping with the theme of television, is this an episode of Fifth Factor or Lost? Once again, is this an episode of Fifth Factor or Lost? Let's get to it. One thing I will say, I do have a fear of having light skin children. Ooh. <laughs> I want my kids to be brown. Yeah. But they're probably not gonna be brown. Yeah. And I'm like becoming okay you with might have a demo. I will be very happy. Mm. I will I it but I I want my kids to be brown. Mm-hmm. But if they're not, it's fine. So once again, is this a case of fifth factor or is this or is she lost? Let's Let's get at it. Who's up first? It's a case of ignorance factor, and she's definitely lost. <laughs> Why you say that, C.B. Smith? Um, you know, I mean, there's all kind of conversations around colorism within the black community, and we understand it to be a thing. We understand and know, you know, historically that there has been a bias towards um, more light-skinned people you know, people. Um, but I, I think that I think that as we came into our own, as we as we began to embrace who we were, you know, um, and, and, and we started to see ourselves as a standard of beauty, I think that dynamic started to shift and started to change. I know it did for me personally, you know, uh, the media outlets and everything that, you know, historically uh, projects a certain image as beauty would typically be uh, a lighter skinned woman. But one day I just woke up and decided for myself, hold on, why are they beautiful to me? Are they beautiful to me because they're actually beautiful or because I've been told they were beautiful? And I started to look at light skinned women through a different lens. Um, And I started to appreciate dark skinned women a lot more. And I realized that I have more of an affinity for a darker woman, typically. A beautiful woman's a beautiful woman. But if you want to talk about my leanings, for me personally, it's definitely uh, a darker complected woman. So you would agree that we actually have a bias then for light skin versus dark skin because you yourself said that you have a affinity for darker tone women. Uh, I, I again, I, I think that that I think that that's a there's been a shift that's taken place, and I think that we're at a place where people are comfortable liking what they like, and I'm one of those ones that's very comfortable liking what I like. If you look at if you pay attention to what I post even inside of our Facebook group, uh. I would say 95% of what I've posted when I'm posting a woman that I find to be beautiful, if you pay attention, she's almost always dark. I post, I posted a couple of light skinned women, but they were special. They were set apart. And so, you know, I, I don't know that that necessarily is absolutely holds true anymore. All right. All right. So Mr. T, what, what, sir, you, is this uh, episode of fear factor or does the episode of loss? I say she lost, man. You know, Longer the thing the, the name of the game when having a child is just your child is healthy and have all his faculties. Forget the color, your child should be healthy. That's what she if she were to really want a child, that should be her that should be what she's concerned about. That her child is healthy and have all his faculties. So right now I would say she is lost. Oh man, BG, you coming up next, sir. So you got time. Yo, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. So um 
Yeah, she sounds, uh, I would say, definitely, she it's a fear factor for her. Um, because the reality is, as a darker parent, and you have these light-skinned kids, and they're brighter, you, you're trying to associate your, with your kids. So I'm going to just answer and say fear factor. Like, if they're too far um, pale for her, it's like a disconnect. Because even though you know the, those are your kids, you know, look, I'm going to make it real quick for you. I have me... Uh, my youngest, a light skinned beauty. And I know that if I go to the mall on the wrong day um, and they come and find me and they say, and they look real hard, they'd be like, sir, step away from the baby, put the stroller down. This is not your <laughs> child. Now, I tell you this if she's wearing kids or Uggs, I'm definitely in trouble. But if they pull the blanket down and see Jordans, they're going to be like, sorry, sir, have a good day. That is your baby. <laughs> But that's that's how I answer that. Uh, so. what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but you said lighter skin baby. I want to just interject on this because I don't know if I said it, but she's married to a white man. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you know my and that's what no, I'm saying. Like, that that's the problem. Because when she's by herself with these babies and they like five shades lighter than her, it's going, you know, it, she it's it's her kids, but you feel like, dang, this baby, they don't really look like me. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, that, that's what it is. I think it's just a, a fear uh, factor for her. Let me ask you all this question about. Well, why are you marry a white guy? Because why even marry a white guy? Question. Why even marry a white guy if you know that that's who she loved? Why don't she put well, that Well, then, we worry about what the color of the kids going to come out. Well, she can't guarantee what color she hoping. Like sometimes it's like when you see C.B. Smith, for example, he is like when you look at his two daughters, literally like you couldn't even made that up where the two hues between the two parents. Right. Sometimes the babies are down the middle or they both take the color of kind of close to one parent. But he literally has two kids that took the color of each parent. That's pretty cool. Right. But but the concern is cb smith if he's out and about he's not concerned about it as a guy but if somebody sees it they may see some of the features but they're like man that ain't your baby for real because that's what color does right it causes that little bit of doubt right don't people doubt it when the baby ain't a certain color they be like you need to get a, a a test you know dna test like i'm telling you this stuff be real like no that's your baby but that color will make you doubt it you know so now if the baby come out white that's a different story you know um but, the, but that's my take on it. But let me ask you this, because if you was in this man position and you was married to a white lady and she didn't want to have brown skinned kids, what would you do in this whole situation? So would you stay with her or Bump would you? In the mouth. Man, y'all already together, condone, man. We do not condone domestic violence on this channel. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is from a former cop. They, 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 they condone street cop. violence. That is the former cop. That is, this is not that channel. We do not condone domestic violence over here. It, no DV It's over acceptable here. to no him. <laughs> Uh, it's acceptable to him. <laughs> no DV over here. Coach DC came in. I never had a problem with my color, and I don't understand those who do. I don't live by what people say. I'm with him because he dirty red too. So, <laughs> so, but what do you do if you was a man, if you was married to a Caucasian lady or Asian and she didn't want to have darker skinned kids? What do you do? Well, I use myself, for example. I, I wasn't worried about it. I'm like, look, this baby going to be somewhere down the middle. If not, we'll deal with it. One thing I know is um, when it came to, to my wife, like my baby, when first born, everybody's like, oh, man, this baby Asian. Right. Definitely ain't look like totally me. Little Asian. Baby. <laughs> totally Asian. The, the baby is now, you know, she's older Asian now. And it, <laughs> she's looked like everything except me for the first six months but now you can see the hair thicken up the skin is getting browner and now people are like okay that's both of y'all but for for a while like i told you if i'm in public you can't wear uggs you can't wear cat cats i need to put jordans on you so it was like okay that's that's some black feature we do believe you sir you don't have to step away from the baby <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie it wasn't it wasn't her color you know, when I got when I got the privilege of being able to meet your youngest, it wasn't her color that uh, that th that threw me for a loop and made me call call things into question. It was the fact that <laughs> you didn't have your forehead. 
right? <laughs> so I was like, hold on. I'm not so sure that this is kid because she ain't got his forehead. But she got time to grow into it. Unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, she's a girl, so you know she can wear bangs if she oh, does. Oh gosh! So that's a determining factor because she didn't have my forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you y'all are trifling, right man. Now, Hussie B. Smith, they, they like, yeah, this suspect. <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, dog, I don't know about that, dog. <laughs> y'all are nuts, crazy. man. Nah, that's but crazy. that's all it is. But, but you're right, though. Name. I agree with y'all. I agree with you, Mister Life. You didn't give your take, though. What was your take? I was about to say this right here. I personally think she's racist. Oh, gosh. I'm going to say it. I'm going to take it this deep. I think it's the chip that's programmed that put into a lot of black women's backs to where they want the, that they want a white man because of the status that comes along with them, but don't understand the whole implication of everything else. Like she wants to be pro-black but she still wants that white man, but she somehow despises him at the same time to where she cannot reconcile the two. And she's taking it out on her not yet born kids by saying that she don't want Brown, that, that, that she doesn't want light skinned kids. I think she's just simply passing this off on to the kids about what she feel about him. I think she's secretly probably be upset with black men from, from not finding a rich black man to wife her up because the guy that she's with is broke as well. So now she got a broke white man and don't know what to do. And she married him probably for status and he doesn't even, and he doesn't even bring that. I think she racist. I think she racist and disappointed in him. <laughs> <laughs> this man here yeah. is just. You've been watching too much Ayanna look, right? Like, it's <laughs> like she racist. She, she disappointed in him. Yeah, yeah, if she don't want light-skinned kids and she married a white man, yeah, you racist. Just call it what it is. Let this man go. I don't even know. She's a colorist. She's How more color. She it? just no, but yeah, she ain't racist. But you can't be a colorist. You're right. Just I need my babies. They can be brown, but they gotta be the hue that's close to to me instead of dark brown so she's more a colorist than racist but she married a white man and don't want light-skinned kids see that's the issue with me we, we want to talk about, if she would have married cb smith she would have still had brighter skinned kids so <laughs> oh so you're saying the white is the x factor <laughs> yeah that's the x factor inside this because she could have went and married a biracial guy and still had darker skinned kids but she married a white man and none is a big problem like we talked about she like, said it's a fear it's you a good. fear she didn't say that she's it's a fear it's not that she doesn't want she, she of course she gonna yet. love her babies she haven't had kids <laughs> yet so it's not a fear <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem <laughs> this is a problem this is a problem so i'm gonna pass this one off to cb smith for being the winner of tonight on the first segment of fear factor and law cb smith sir you get the last say so on this segment I have two kids. Both of them are by the same woman. Um, one is extremely uh, light. The other one's, you know, very dark. Um, I think it's really sad that, you know, uh, we as a people have. Sorry about that. Uh, I think it's really sad that we as a people have such a, a low self image that we reduce ourselves down or build ourselves up based on based on a, a, a skin tone. Um, to me, it's very sad. So uh, if you're going to go out there and if you're going to marry somebody from another racial group, then, you know, it, it is what it is. One may one may lean more towards his tone. tone the other one may lean towards her tone. Be prepared for whatever it is, because procreation, you don't get to decide about what that kid looks like. God does. Thank you for wrapping that up, my friend. Thank you. That was said perfectly. And I think she races. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, black people can't be racist. Since when? Said said the black racist on the panel. I know, right? He's probably the most racist one of there. <laughs> 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 all right, you all know what time it is. It's time for a uh, big deal, no deal. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into a big deal, no deal. Man, we have some good ones for you all tonight, man. Uh, 
So tonight we're going to start with Russell Simmons' daughter had a 65-year-old boyfriend. Oh, oh let me shit. let me put this up here. Let me put this up here. Yeah, there we go. Man, I had to hide the booty a little bit. But CB Smith, do you see that no ass at all on that's going on right there, my friend? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> listen, I listen. I've known you for a long time. I know that is a non-option for you the way she looked from the back. <laughs> She is so beautiful, but man, when you see her turn around, you just you close your eyes and just cringe. When she <laughs> when she when she turn around, you turn around. <laughs> you turn around. Is, is that sand on her butt, or did somebody try to erase her butt and didn't finish? I'm confused. No, I, yeah, I put a little gloss over it to try to hide the G string because you can see it go all the way down her butt, even from the side. And I thought that would just gross at the same time like how can i see your g-string from the side going down all your butt so you i just should have left for right now i'm confused well, you two wouldn't have done nothing she ain't got enough for you two to block it she didn't erase her so butt I god did that i'm trying to tell you she ain't got enough for you two to block it what are you talking about <laughs> and 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 god was perfect at erasing her butt as well because he is perfect when and he shows his he showed his perfection on that one smith <laughs> That's that's a nice at all, but but Russell Simmons' daughter had a 65 year old boyfriend that went on a vacation that she went on a vacation with, and then after they came back, she broke up with him. And Russell Simmons did not approve of the relationship. Is this a big deal or no deal? Let's get at it. Oh, we Somebody, own it right now. You ain't yeah. no video. My bad. I'm, I'm acting no, like no. it's going to be a live video. Look, no, this is no, not this a is... deal because Russell Simmons, uh, he's probably done the same thing as well. So, you know, in Hollywood, is if it's fair for him to shoot a shot as somebody who's 20 and 30 years younger, then, you know, on the, on the flip side, uh, she can do the same thing and go older or younger. So it's not a deal. Not a, not a big deal to me at all. Who next? Who up next? T Mr. T around here chewing his bubble gum. Mm -mm. No, Charlie Loma go next. Don't nobody want to go. Uh, I'll speak is, for them. This is would be disgusting. Ignorant. Is what it is. <laughs> it's an ill deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ill. Let's just let's just be honest. For those of us that are fathers of girls, you know, like no, like no, like just no. <laughs> so this so it just no <clears throat> so it just, just no <clears throat> so mr t all right so this right here this is nasty i don't know why y'all old jokers want to mess with somebody who probably younger than your granddaughter this is nasty so what i would say is this is a big deal because um, I wouldn't want my daughter dating someone like this. I know that you, somebody in the crowd would say, oh, well, you can't help who you love and all that other bull crap. Yes, you can. Yes, heck, you can. This right here is nasty. This is nasty. I wouldn't want my daughter dating nothing like that. So I think I'm, I'm, I agree with Russell Simmons. I agree with Russell Simmons on this one. This is a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, the G comes in. Even chicks, even chicks that come from money using old men for free trips. <laughs> that's why I, that's where I was going with this is a big deal. Because we seen the modern day woman play out in full force right here. This is everything. This says it all to me. That comment right there by Miss Yada G says why this is a big deal. Because we ain't we're not looking at this from the prism of the whole social aspect. We have a young lady that's father is probably worth five to seven hundred million dollars. Got money coming out of yin yang. She has endorsements. She has her own side business, but yet she still finds time to whore herself out with a 65 year old man just to ride on a yacht and to go overseas. Well, we're seeing all this play out right now. Well, her and uh, Russell Simmons did have a conversation. Um, and, you know, it's it's out there on the Internet. And she told him if he didn't up her allowance, she was going to go and get her a sugar daddy. And that's exactly what she did. 
And, and, it's, and you're just that's even worse. Point. She don't want to work. You, you are hammering home my point about these modern women. You thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Mr. C.B. Smith. <laughs> Y'all shut up now. <laughs> but that's the thing. That, that's why this is a big deal. Miss Yoda G hit the nail on the head. Y'all totally missing what's going on right now. We, man, we have a societal problem right now. And and this is just disgusting. Um, I think we all on that one with this being totally disgusting. Let's move on to the next one. Donald Trump walks into a Chick-fil-A somewhere in South Atlanta, and he buys everyone milkshakes and sandwiches. And one young black lady walks up to Trunks and tells him she fully supports him and gives him a hug. Is this a big deal or a no deal? Come on, Bad Gemini. Oh, man, this is definitely, um, it's not a big deal. Look, th this, I'll put it real quick. It's not a big deal because black folks been rocking with Trump. Apparently, once he becomes president, like uh, the, the first go around, people disassociated with him. But he's been named in every rap song, every look. Like, it's been so many references to Trump getting that money. But when he um, became president and, you know, he was in the mainstream, people just had a, a, a vitriol for him. And they discuss saying, you know, he's just a typical white racist, right? But I mean, this is not nothing new. He's been um, in collabs with rappers and influential people who are black and of other races for, for 30, 40 plus years. So this is just, you know, hey, look, at least he didn't go in there and said, look, if you don't like this chicken and milkshakes, then you ain't black. You know what I'm saying? So he went in there, bought people's stuff, and, and that was that. Like, so yeah, not a big deal to me. What's a big deal is y'all know what was a big deal when your boy said, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. That was terrible. <laughs> Trump didn't do that. <laughs> Mr. T. I think this is not a big deal at all. I think a lot of black people will vote for Donald Trump this go around. So she ain't no different than a lot of the other jokers who gonna fall for this joke again. So forget him. Dang, fall for this joker again? How could you fall for this joker again when we didn't vote for him the first go around? Think about it. Fall means you voted for him. That's not a fall. This is coming to a better decision in choosing, right? Falling. Black folks didn't fall for Trump because they didn't I vote don't for him think, like that the first go around. I don't think that we got a good decision on either side. So. You're a lifelong Democrat. Have you ever voted anything? No, God done a lifelong Democrat. What's wrong with you? Okay, so I'm not I'm even in the middle. Gonna expose you. No, nah, you ain't in the middle. When it came to your vote, because now you got me acting stupid <laughs> on here. When it came to your vote, would you say you've mo voted a Democrat for your presidents? You probably voted for at least seven of them. You are you saying a majority of them weren't Democrats? Heck yeah, okay, I'm a majority now, of a Democrat. I, I, I Okay, let's go ahead and like carry on the show. Like the majority, the majority, the majority as all. in hey, all. the majority as in all A L L. All of them. 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 All <laughs> and everyone, Ra Ra here, radio voted for all of them, coach. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even say I take both. He took too many to be both. He like I take five, coach. Six. I take seven, coach. Oh yeah, he black. I take seven, coach. How many want radio? I take seven. Seven of them. I actually was looking for a radio clip, man. I gotta find what. What? I gotta get radio up on here, man. <laughs> we gotta mm. get a radio clip. CB Smith, where you stand on this, sir? Listen, man, this is hold on. Let me let me put the make sure the mic's right in front of my face so you can hear me clearly. This is a big deal. Everything that Trump does is a big deal. Listen, <laughs> Trump is an absolute force. Whether you like him or not, you got to admit he's an absolute force to be reckoned with. Um, it's also a big deal for another reason. Um, last election, 95 percent of black women voted Democrat. Never in the history of ever has one racial gender voted 95%. Mm. 
What are you doing? Drinking and smoking, probably. So you gotta take some gulps. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta, I got, I gotta gulp it out. Ninety-five percent. Never in the history of ever have ninety-five percent of any one uh, racial and gender group vote. Ninety-five percent. So to see uh, black women start to respond this way, because black men have already started to make an exodus, a mass exodus from the left, right? And now we're starting to see the black women follow. I think that's a very big deal. I think that the tides are shifting. So yeah, I'm gonna say big deal. I'm gonna go with this a big deal too. I'm gonna piggyback off of Mr. C.B. Smith because never in the history have we saw a black woman that goes to a, a majority black college in Spelman, walk up to dunk, walk up to a Republican, walk up to a Republican president that everybody has chastised and beat down for being racist, and give him a hug, and says she support him, supports him. Black women by large stands as a monolith when it comes to being locked footstep with the Democrat Party. They do not bend nor do they break. They are always on unity and always on coal and always know all the talking points and they don't have to communicate them to all the black women. They just instinctually just know all the talking points without anything being said. I don't know what type of jujitsu that the Democrat Party has, but they can put that little chip from Washington, D.C. to all across America right into the implanted head of mostly every black woman in America. I think this is a big deal. I think this is a great deal because of that. And I read the comments when I saw this and all the chips went off on everybody and calling this girl all types of names and what she was. And no one mentioned to call her a child of God. Not one time from actually saying that she support Trump. The chip is still alive inside a lot of black women and, and some black men. But I think this is a big deal. And I'm also with Mr. T. I don't think, I think this is a lose, lose situation. But I won't get into why. So let's get on to the next one. Woman takes picture. Uh, this one is fun. This one is fun. Woman takes picture of a trans shaving in the locker room in a pre in a shaving in the ladies' locker room in Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness bans woman. Weeks later, a man walks into the ladies' locker room in Planet Fitness and they throw him in jail. And the man identifies as being a woman. Is this a big deal or no deal? <clears throat> this is super deal. This is super big deal. You know why? Because Planet Fitness don't lost so much damn money. People say they rather um, work out in the back alley where a crackhead is than go on Planet Fitness. That is bad right there. Like, I ain't, like people are refusing to go in there. Like they've lost hundreds of millions to where the CEO had to speak out on it. And this is not the first case. This one made news, but uh, uh, there have been other cases um, of assaults and instances that have happened. This one just finally made the news because somebody had, you know, the mindset to record the whole situation in terms of um, a video of how they were treated. Now, yeah, it's a big deal because folks ain't for that. Look, people can rock how they want to rock, do what they want to do. But when you talk about me being a father of uh, uh, two daughters, I, first off, I don't need nobody talking about we going to come out here and swing our Johnsons in the bathroom and we the same. Hey, I got a son. He has a Johnson. The other kids, hey, they born, they got their natural part. So they shouldn't be subject to seeing a grown man out here um, with his, uh, you know, what would they used to the country, his 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 paddy whack or whatever you call it in the country down <laughs> south out here in these streets. You can't be out here Pally with a paddy whacker. Pally, thank you, because I couldn't remember. I was like, I ain't heard it in years, but his paddy whacker out here in the damn streets. Pally. You don't want to see nobody paddy whackers. <laughs> it ain't paddy, it's tally. tally. Like where you live, tally, tally, oh. tally like tally mm -hmm. tally Tally whacker. whacker. Okay, well, hey, tally whacker. We don't want to see tally whackers out here in the women's restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. T, Mr. T, what you doing, man? You up there? He, oh, I'm, I'm not even going to say it. He's mic checking I for think, the wrong reason. Yeah, I thought he was. I doing think this is uh, why he was on live. But <laughs> I think this is a big deal, man. I think that uh, because of the foolishness that um, that um, 
of the laws that they are relaxing on that P, the, you that this is the the, the the fallout of it that you got idiots going in the bathrooms um doing all kind of foolishness and saying that uh they identify as something that they they're not so i think this is a big deal i think that it's a wonder why ain't more more things like this has happened that's uh more brutal so i think this is a big deal i think that um this should um bring the attention to this foolishness that they have allowed to to take place so it's a big deal to me cb smith <clears throat> uh i mean i think it goes without saying this is a big deal anytime anytime a man tries to put himself inside of women's spaces such as locker rooms and sports you know um like and we we allow for ourselves to be dumbed down and, and anesthetized to the cold harsh reality of the dangers that it presents for women is insane to me to put it into perspective we just had a transgender male which is not a real thing but a woman that was a person that was born a biological woman that was a boxer decided that i'm now a man went went through the went through the whole uh gender reassignment surgery and then got in the in the ring and had a fight with a man and got knocked out in 21 seconds you know this is a big deal this is very very dangerous and we can't be silent and say nothing because we are supposed to be the watchman on the wall and if we ain't protecting women who will big deal Mr. Life, I know you want to go. Hold on. I can't. Look, I am damn it. Shoot. Look, this is when you go to the damn gym, you around here is supposed to be worried about medicine balls, not ball sacks. And that's a big problem right there. <laughs> they should be out here working out, worried about the medicine balls, tossing them, getting them. But no, ain't no medicine balls. You got to deal with ball sacks in your darn locker room and you're trying to bathe. This is terrible. You know what I'm saying? This a, it's a, it's a dumbbell. It's dumb. It's dumb bell ish. It's stupid. I can't. I can't. Go ahead, Mr. Light. It's pissing me off thinking about this nonsense. I think this is a big deal. But I think it was a big deal for a totally different reason because you are missing all the comedy that keep on coming out about all this buff about all this buffoonery. I absolutely love it. Women are so confused. They don't know what to do right now. They just keep on talking and digging holes and digging holes and digging holes and don't know what's right, don't know what's up, don't know what's wrong, don't know what's wrong. We got the liberals doing the same thing. We got all these people that say that saying that how it should be and then when these laws start to come into play and then they be looking all all sideways and, and be like, I'm not sure if this is working out how, how I thought it should work out. Man, the funniest thing I saw was when the was when the transgender started playing in the female volleyball league, and it was literally, uh, I think it's five <laughs> players on it's it's about five players on each side, right? It's five players on each side. Literally, four of the women, four of the people out there, I'm gonna say people were transgender women. <laughs> On each side, and you saw the real women off to the sideline, not coming in because the transgender took over. I think this is hilarious. <laughs> I thought, it, and and the funny part is the transgenders won. Which one won? We don't know because it was both sides. <laughs> I think this is a big deal. I think this is funny. I think it's funny that Caitlyn Jenner actually won Woman of the Year. <laughs> You can't make up. This is just comedy gold. You can't make you can't make none of this stuff up. We got a man that actually wanted to try Athlon as a man, then turned around and won the Woman of the Year as a pseudo woman. This is this is comedy gold. <laughs> hey, even <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner spoke out though. You brought up a good thing with the. That's the thing when when the, um Biden had the national. A uh, day of recognition uh, for uh, transgendered and, and and so forth on. Then it happened to fall on Easter weekend on Easter Day. Even Caitlyn Jenner had to speak out and like, nah. Like when you hear that guy or her, as some would say, say that's the Lord's Day and and you're being reckless. I'm like that. 
that that is wild. Had a whole tweet about it, like, "Hey, y'all better put respect on God's name." I know I'm out here with these uh, this boob job, and I got I still got my tally whacker while having a boob job. But y'all gonna put respect <laughs> on God's name. That tally whacker, right? That tally whacker. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that tally whacker. <laughs> Hey, we coming with all the throwback terms. You know what I'm saying? Bag them, tag them, release them back in the wild. <laughs> That's literally and figuratively when you're talking about what's going on over there. <laughs> no, you don't bag and tag. You just release it back. <laughs> you're like, oh, I caught a muted. <laughs> you are too tickle right now. This is, see, it shows how sick your mind. You got that sadistic side of you. Not, and it's hilarious. Like, you be scrolling 2 a.m. looking at the most ratchet stuff ever you and laughing at it. You're, You're like, an evil you genius. Know, you know what? Oh, I, I, gotta, I think this is hilarious. Yes, sir. I got to disagree. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't uh, tag it and release it back in the wild because this is already too wild. You keep this confined. <laughs> You keep this. You keep this in maximum security confinement. This is, this is absolute insanity, and and I think that largely one of the main reasons that Mister Life is able to find the humor in it, whereas the rest of us aren't, is because he's the only one in the panel that doesn't have uh, kids. That is that true. true. That is true. That could be true. That is that true. Because we would be in Meleville. Like let me tell you, hey, people don't mind. You know how people say I catch a charge on this one. This is one of them. Like, people, this is one of them you ain't even thinking about it. Like, hey, baby, just make sure you keep money on the books in the canteen and know your daddy went out of G. Like, you don't even question. Like, Charlie Lama ain't flinching on it. Mr. T ain't flinching. You ain't even thinking twice. Baby, keep money on the books. Goodness. Oh, God. Hey, just tell your daughter that don't go play sports with him, and you'll be good. You know, because they're winning everything right now. I can't wait till the Olympics. <laughs> You know, but you know what the funny part will be like Olympics. Come on, if they if they incorporate that into the Olympics, it's downhill for real, for real. But just imagine one of these dudes cross over a woman, because you know it already looked bad when a talented woman cross over another one. One of these guys, uh, and just cross over. You're like, dang, like this dude out here joking. And nah, man, I, let's go to the next one, man, because he's yeah, trying dude, to get us all yeah, arrested. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, let me move on because I'm about to get myself in trouble because I have so much I want to say about this. You're going to get a shadow ban. Uh, I cannot say none of it because <laughs> I have literally about 14 shorts of TikToks ready to go on oh, this gosh. subject alone <laughs> that nobody thought about. <laughs> but all right. Whew, let me you know what? I'm going to say, say this and then I'm going to be done. I mean, the level of insanity that we're operating in is mind numbing. I mean, you got an MMA fighter calling themselves Fallon Fox going in and fighting against women and knocking them out cold, breaking jaws and stuff, man. Come on, man. What are we doing? <laughs> hey, see, the thing is, they remember the, the power you bring a, up a key point, Charlie Lam. It goes both ways. So he was okay when women, when you know, women like, oh, let me try and give it a shot in men's sports. But when these um guys like, yeah, I identify as a woman and went on the other side and started crossing them over, dunking on them, punching them in the grill. Yeah, it's it, it turned to a real nightmare real quick. So yeah, they, they hopefully we fix it all at least in terms of sports, right? Because that don't make no sense. But go ahead, Mister Life, because you cause What's trouble up? tonight. Man, I can cause so much trouble on this one and get myself fired from my job. So I got, I'm gonna just be quiet on this one. Yeah, Beans. you fired and don't know it already. Yeah, Stop yeah, you, you just totally, totally. Beans, what's up, man? Hey, Beans, I thought you go live on Thursday, but if you available, man, put something inside the chat and I'll drop the link for you, my friend. You can join us for the rest of the ride. All right, man, let's get into the next one of, of Big Deal, No Diddy Deal. Diddy said the same thing, Mr. Life. Yeah, I'm going to drop something for you real quick in your drink, and you can be down for the rest of the ride. Pause, no Diddy. Yeah, pause, no Diddy. All right, we got our boy back to uh, Caitlyn Jenner. OJ Simpson passed today, and Caitlyn Jenner said, good riddance. And somebody inside the comments said this right here. Let me remove this. You're next in line, Mr. Doubtfire. <laughs> Dang. They shooting Stop. shots. They ain't waste no time. Oh, God. I can't help myself, man. This is just hilarious to me. No All wonder right, you said you're it. ready to get banned. Goodness. Oh, man. All right. Big deal or no deal. Caitlyn Jenner shooting, taking shots at OJ Simpson when he is no longer with us. Big deal or no deal. I'm going to go first. 
I think that this is a um, this is a big deal to a lot of people because a lot of people are secretly happy. I was at work today, and somebody pointed out to me that OJ Simpson had died. I'm like what? And then I started messing with the guy. I said, "You happy, ain't you?" He started laughing. You know, he like you know he he was, you know, it was a white guy. He he in, inside he was happy that OJ Simpson died. Inside, I said, "Yeah, you happy? Look at you, look at you, look at." You. He started laughing. He couldn't help himself. Uh, you know, so I think this is a big deal to a lot of people that that uh, public enemy number one has um ha has gone gone bye bye. So they feel like justice has been served. Finally, justice has been served. So this is a big deal to a lot of people. Man, I'm gonna jump right in and say this here um, because who it came from. There's a direct connection, right? Because you're talking about, you know, she. I mean, come on. The this is the the new husband who had kids, right? The the younger two, but prior to that, the Kardashians, right? The the lawyer who was part of the case, right, with uh Johnny Cochran and all those who helped defend o, OJ. And then so with with me, I look at it like um it, it's a big deal, but for for a different reason. Look, I will say this here. Good riddance is what a lot of men said when Caitlyn Jenner wanted to become a damn woman. So I was trying to leave it alone, but so it, it's kind of a break even to me. So I don't, it's like it's it's a no deal, it's a big deal, it's right down the middle. Cause once we said you rocking with the you want to be a woman, we like good riddance to you as well. You feel me? So it works both ways. So that's my damn answer. Good riddance to you as well. You wanted to be a woman. Nobody's claiming you say you need to come back to manhood. And this man dead. It ain't like he died at 40 or 30. 76 was his age, right? And so he had a full life. So, hey, um, I ain't tripping about it. Everybody got to die. So you celebrating that means nothing to me. I mean, yeah, everybody got to die. Everybody, everybody got to go, and I think this statement sums it up the best. Oh, can you bring that back for me, sir? If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> CB Smith, where you at, man? I'm gonna get myself, I'm gonna get myself in trouble tonight, so I'm not gonna speak on this one. CB Smith, where you at, friend? <laughs> <laughs> well well i mean listen that boy that boy went and bought some dog on that boy uh bruce jenner went and bought some magnums and the glove didn't fit so, so he, he decided be. to quit being a man yeah I'm glad you had it right where I was headed, CB. CB Smith, he's my evil genius on the other side. Thank you, CB Smith. Because I was about to give a whole lesson to young brothers. Look, if the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. Don't try to enter. Don't do that because that child support is knocking on your front door. So once again, if the glove does not fit, you must have quit. And don't try to say we can make it work. It ain't going to work. It may slip off and it's going to be a disastrous night for you. Oh, man. Oh. Uh I'm not going to say anything about this one. I'm going to stay completely away from this subject because I got a wife and a career that I need to protect. And a lot of people won't like my stance on this one. But so let us gentlemen. hear it. You should do it anyway. <laughs> you yeah, should do it anyway. We'll it. protect you. We'll protect you, you anyway. Protect you can't pay me the money that they pay me to do what I do and for how long I do it. Because <laughs> we know I don't work, work hard at all. So, so. <clears throat> I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm going to try to be as BG as possible. And I really mean BG when he was going through his troubles and he was trying to keep everything politically correct. There was a long time in American history where a lot of bad stuff happened to black people and no one cared. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm moving on on that one. Y'all read between the lines on that one. Let's get into Dang, a commercial. Can we throw a little niggerly and shiftless in there just for good old times? <laughs> I have I have so much I want to say on this. There is so much that's bottled up inside me that I really can't let out because we really haven't. No, let, I'm a, no forget yet. that. I'm going to speak for you. You are right. I'm not going to get us banned. Let me tell you, white people celebrating black deaths have been going on for eons. So I'm going to just leave it at that. And that's y'all get the gist of it. So this, just add this to the long list of white people celebrating black deaths. You're welcome. Hold on. The, the, the angry man um, said, 
send me the email and I'll say it out loud. <laughs> Ooh, we L O L. We need to, I will do that because there's so much can be said on this and we go back to the last topic as well. Oh man, it's just so much material out there. So much material. So much material to go. All right, so let's get into a commercial. This is going to be about a two-minute commercial, so that give our guys some time to go uh, do what they need to do. Give Mr. T some time to regroup because he seemed like he dead sleep tonight or go beat his meat so he can get a little perked up or go take a perk. I don't know. Choose one. Go do this. His future wife need to fix him a sandwich. You know food get him <laughs> real needs, happy. Yeah, yeah. He needs a sandwich or some sugar, man. <laughs> Mr. T, get to the commercial because he, he needs all right, a let's break let's get to commercial let's get to commercial <laughs> we'll be right back with you all when you control a man thinking you don't have to worry about his actions you don't have to tell him to stand here or go yonder he will find his proper place and stay in it you don't need to send him to the back door he will go without being told in fact if there's no back door he will cut one for his own special benefit. His education makes it necessary. And that's why we thought it was necessary that we start this podcast, Man Made Men. This is where we will be interviewing extraordinary men that's doing extraordinary things throughout their community, their life, their family, with love, care, and passion. So join us as we embark on this journey of finding men all across America that's doing extraordinary things on man made men. Let's get it started. I have some pushback on that. You probably won't invite me back after this, but it's okay. We are the largest millionaires per capita in this country as black people. When the casket closed, what do you want to be remembered by and known for? So that that is, I don't fear much in life, but that is a big one for me. will kill the horse you cannot break it it's the it's the only it's the only horse that cannot be broken how you handle a mustang is very different than how you handle other horses so when you deal with a woman who is a force like my wife is no no you'd rather fight with me than fight with her trust and believe that (laughs) um but i had to give her the reason the reason it took time to build that trust and i think we're at that point now where, you know, she's still an educated woman. She got questions. If I tell her I'm going to do something like, okay, well, what does that look like? I need to see this, 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 and this. And I sometimes I have to remind her, I say, look, this is a spirit led thing. I can't explain it to you, but my history thus far has proven that every time I've taken a direction, mm-hmm. it has worked out for That's the it. best. Mm-hmm. Can you trust it? All right, all right, we are back. So, what do y'all think about that commercial? Give me, give me some feedback on that one. Hey, we like going it. to higher heights. I'm gonna leave it at that. I like it. You like that? Higher that is <clears throat> that is great. That is great. <clears throat> oh, oh, all right, yeah. So, let me ask you all this before we get into the next Y'all topic. Look and all right, yeah, that is the Florida weather. So we. Probably can't do anything about that tonight. <clears throat> so, yeah, we had a major storm. I lost a my, the power last night. My internet had to reboot. So if I'm throttled down, my bad. But we here though. Let's get it. All right. So let me get to this one. All right. So let's get to this. Did it? Yep. I hit the right one though for the first time. Do, are modern women at a disadvantage when it comes to the dating field? and trying to find men in America. Is Ooh. that a question or is that uh, you're yes. going to show a video? No. You're going to show a video? Gonna the video? You're going to get to the video, but that's a quick question. Quick question. <clears throat> ask, that, ask that question again. I'm sorry. Are modern women are modern women at a disadvantage right now here in America when it comes to trying to find, find, find mates and men here? You know in our country. No. No, okay. No, kitty cat is kitty cat. Well, that'll get them some uh, some D, but it won't get them marriages, and that's what they. For want, some, right? hey, if, if they if for some jokers they do it right on them, they're gonna be like sunshine. Hey, call your mama. Um, tell tell your mama ain't coming home no more. <laughs> when you throw them there, just turning to sunshine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hey, just throw it up in the air, just turn to sunshine. 
<laughs> Back to now, what you say about that before we Look, no, nah, I'm saying they definitely at a disadvantage. <clears throat> Look, let me, I'm going to break it down. Disadvantage of finding a man? No. Disadvantage of keeping a man? To the yeah, yeah. Yes, they are at a disadvantage for keeping a man. Finding one? <laughs> no. Right. Keeping one? Yes. You are definitely right. And this TikToker has some things to say about modern women. Let's figure out, is it gospel or gossip? Let's get at it. To watch this woman. So let me get this straight. So many modern day women think that they're the prize because basically they're a functioning adult and they pay their bills. Like, congratulations for paying your electric bill. I guess that means you deserve princess treatment. Meanwhile, these women are ill-mannered, don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to take constructive criticism. They only know how to focus on negative behaviors instead of positive behaviors. They have unhealed trauma that they constantly project onto other people. They're selfish and entitled and expect everyone to cater to them while they give nothing in return. They have poor time management. They don't have any priorities in place. They don't know how to focus. They don't know what they really want in life, which is why they dabble in everything and sleep around. They prefer negative attention rather than no attention at all. Their idea of positive friendships is how many followers they have and their reputation online is more important than who they are in real life. Dismissive to anybody's feelings or opinions if it doesn't validate them. They bully people while simultaneously preaching women empowerment. But yet they have so much to bring to the table because they're a functioning adult and they pay their bills. Oh man, she went in on this one. So Oof, let's get to it. She dropped a lot of heat on their head. Yeah, Gosh, that was a lot of it. things there. So if you need me to go back through it, just just give me a point that you want to play back she over. But just let me know. She was spot on, but I think I think she uh, failed to mention one thing. She mentioned poor time management, but I think that the one thing that she failed to mention was poor coochie management. <laughs> that is valid as well. And so CB Smith goes with this is gospel. Where you stand on this, Mr. T? Gospel or gossip? This is gospel. What she just preached. Straight up and down? Nothing else? Straight up and down. Nothing oh, else. Yeah. I, I'm down? rocking with that. Gospel, definitely. Look, she yes, because what she said is people who have this function are saying they deserve entitlement. That's 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 as simple as I could process it. People who have dysfunctions who refuse to work on their dysfunction are saying I deserve to be in, in um entitled while being dysfunction uh or dysfunctional. So I'm like, yeah, that she was uh that's gospel on uh, what she's talking about. Do y'all think it's because if this gospel well well let me back up because Mr. T said that women don't have a problem about getting men before the clip but now he's saying that these women this is gospel what she's saying so mr t i see some conflict inside your reasoning there well you asked me a question that uh do i think yeah. that modern women today has a problem getting men no i don't see that there has a problem but that clip was about the actions that what happens um and i said that for some men some men can um some men can function in toxicity. Some men can function in a woman always being toxic, uh, always being negative because that's what they've seen all their life. That's how their mama was. That's how their sister was. That's how their aunt was, their grandma, because they've seen it and they can they can, they can can um, remain in it. So some men love toxic women. So I'm not saying... I know y'all go on this show that um, 41, 50... 49, 51, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. 49, yeah, yeah. 51. Yeah, 51, 49, but, um, majority rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so at the end of the day, I don't think the modern women have a problem because if they're fine, um, some men will say, you know, forget that. I don't want to let her go. I know she got a little attitude or whatever. I know she's this way, but I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to ride out. I may cheat on her, but she's going to be my main chick. That's how some men think. So, no, I don't think that they have a problem, but what that woman was describing was their actions how they act how they what their mindset is and some men is okay with that type of mindset how many men you think give me a number uh, hey, uh, give me a real quick, percentage real, real yes, quick sir. before you before you give the percentage mr t uh mr life drop that drop that link for the angry vet angry vet make sure you got your clothes on gotcha Let's run it. 
Go ahead. You were asking a question to uh, Mr. T, you said, Mr. Life. I know you're dropping the link. Yeah, well, um, so, the so the question was, what percentage do you think it is, Mr. T? Yeah. So, so what, what percentage of men? Do I... Do I think men or do I think the women? Uh, what, what, what are you asking me? Like what percentage now, of men or women? What percentage men? Yeah, that would put up with that. <clears throat> and what you talking about for relationship or marriage? Or I think. See, I'm just saying relationship. I'm not saying even marriage. Like because when a man get married, when a man used to get married, he's not the one to leave. It is the woman. Uh, statistics tell you that that a man is less likely. To, uh, to file for divorce than a woman is. So at the end of the day, I think that uh, secretly, I think you looking at probably about 67% of men would deal with the modern woman like that with those attitudes. Dang, you went high. Look, hold on, Charlie Lama. I want to say this, though. It's funny because uh, Cam Newton had a comment. I think he was asked this um, by Shannon Sharp. And it's like, why, you know, why the man, um, like, you know, in terms of dealing with toxic women, he said, you have red flags and you have six flags. And it's like, sometimes it's just worth taking that ride, even though, you know, it's trouble. It's like, hey, you have the six flags aspect of it. And he going to take that ride, even though, you know. And so I think that's the intrigue, right? You know, you see the red flags, but guys are willing to take that ride because it's like it's something about them. It's that invigorating energy. Same way when, <clears throat> when it comes to intercourse, when people like you have that that heated, that heated dis dispute. And then you get to have an intercourse, you feel like it's a better situation. It makes it passionate. But I don't, you know, I'm older now. I wouldn't subscribe to that. Um, but it's just that slight intrigue to that dysfunction. Because you're right, Mr. Man. T, when you see it, I hold on. When you I see it in your youth that. from your mama's aunties and all that, you're right. You do kind of feel like you connected to it to a degree, even though you shouldn't be. But go ahead, Charlie, and I'm going to talk your trash. Man, stop all your jaw jacking. All the men really want to do is get on that water slide. That's why we're talking about six flags. We want to get on that water slide. Yeah, he says worth the ride. Yeah, six red flags are six flags. What do you want it to be? <laughs> Charlie Lamb's great. But it's the <laughs> truth, though, you know. Um, but, you know, Mr. T, Mr. Life, same question to you because you ain't answer it. We we here and listen to I know you function in the background, but what's your yeah, whole I take am. on it? I want to just point out something to Mr. T. Among black adults, 36% are 36% are of men are married compared to 29% of black women. Dang. I, I was looking up, I was trying to find the ones on uh on um white males as well, but it wasn't jumping out at me as quickly as the one for about black men and black women. I just wanted to put that out there because even I think we talk a lot about black women, but I think we see a bigger problem all across the our entire country because that's still a hell of a low rate and as i recall it's only about 45 to 50 percent of black of white men that that's married and we'll see you know and i think their women aren't married as much as they are as well so they're going out getting asian women and they are getting hispanic women so we're seeing a problem right now and i think this lies into where when we have a cultural change inside our society and we shift for the betterment of all people women women and some men tend to get a little bit more liberal and loose in their values and the things that they believe so i think that women do have a very big problem right now because feminism has ran rampant but i don't think that feminism was the cause it's the that's only the that's only that that is a um that is a comorbidity of a bigger problem that we're having right now well it's not a bigger problem it's just that we are advancing and one of those consequences of that or a trade-off is that when you do advance and women no longer need men women kind of want to start acting like men and men don't want women that act like men they go to a different country and get a woman that has more traditional values because no man wants to come home and find out that his kid isn't his kid because his wife wanted to act like a man and go out there and get bagged and tagged and released back to him. No man wants that. It's imperative. We understand that men cheat. But it's imperative to know that if your woman cheats, that could be fatal. Especially if you took care of a kid 10 years that's, no, that's not yours. 
I think this is a big deal. I think this is a bad deal. I think women are at, I think modern women in America, Canada, uh, if you look in Great Britain, if you look over in Poland, if you look inside South Korea, you see the same thing right now. You see a bunch of men, passport bros, passport, passporting it up. Black men are not the originators of the passport movement. White boys been doing this for a very long time. Especially in the military. Up, yep. Well, if you're talking about the ones from Europe, if you took, if you even if you're talking about the ones from Europe, I had a startling realization when me and my wife went to Cuba, and we saw the Canadians and we saw the Europeans because they still get to go down to Cuba with no problem, right? It's just America has the embargo. They was down there passporting it up and living them a great life. Some going down there to find wives and take them back to their country. Some were just down there tricking and having fun. And they want to talk about black men doing it. But when we went, prostitution was at a 0% cost basis, which means that if you just showed up and you're a foreigner, you had a chance of getting coochie for free for the likelihood of them actually just with the hopes of going back with you. That's how bad it is. And I don't think women on and I don't think women truly understand that. We see you in the background, Angry Vet. You showed your face. You got the, the big man chair. He ain't out here all naked in the streets. So yeah, yeah, we see you. Yeah. All right. We got the angry vet up here tonight. <clears throat> What's up? What's up? What's going on, Cheers. Angry Vet? Cheers to y'all. Cheers to you, my friend. Let's get into it, Angry Vet. Did you hear what this lady had to say about the, Martin women? The the one with the big old bug eye glasses? Yeah, yeah, her. Yeah, I think I think it's it's that mentality. Uh, I mean, like look how old she is. She can't be more than like 35, right? Something like that. Yep. If, if that. Uh, and I think it's the generations that we we raised <laughs> that are that are the, the old old fashioned women are just gone. They're gone. They're they, like they're unicorns nowadays. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, you just don't you don't see many women with with elegance. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's I think it's the mentality. It's these young kids. They grew up entitled. They 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 grew up on their fucking phone. You know, like Tic Tac and all that other horse shit and all, and it, it just they're just not there. So, so where else are we gonna go to get them? Well, the not we, but you know what I mean. Like the majority, like God, I, I remember back in the day when I was in the Navy, Filipino women were like the thing to 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 find and and hold and and keep. <laughs> you know, like. Because they did everything for you and you, you know, didn't make us lazy. It was just nice having a woman that was there to just do everything and anything for you. And so I don't she, hold so on, angry fat. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, angry fat. Don't act like you ain't got a weak spot. I know you're talking about where she got the glasses from and all that. If she right here, she catch you in the parking lot and she wants to put on knee pads and give you gawk gawk five thousand. <laughs> You are not turning that down. Like all that. No, business. absolutely not. <laughs> yes. no. 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 That's no I'll, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make a phone call to the wife first. And then yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you act like it never happened. He'll keep it moving, right? So hey, hey, you married that I respect that. But that's yeah, but the, the trouble. Talks about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Go yeah, ahead, Mr. Life. No, I'm I'm saying he's he's a vet. He's simply saying what I was just saying. It that literally they've been doing this for a very long time i, long I think time. that we i think we had i think they don't see the writing on the wall and i and the same thing that's going on inside south korea where they think they're protesting and they not getting married to the men over there those men quickly found out they can go to taiwan and go to go to uh the other poor country over there and go find them wives for a lot cheaper cost yeah and that's what they doing. They flying out. They gone. Pew pew. You don't have <laughs> men been doing this for a very long time for ages. We're not talking about 20, 30, 50 years. We're talking about uh we're talking we can we the can go back to the existence of military. 
man. to the existence of man. They would literally go conquer yeah. the lands and take the women. <laughs> Yeah, and we, and we like these bras acting up. We don't made it all nice and clean for them, and not even want to start cutting up. Let's go over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I had several shipmates that would get. You know, we would pull into port or whatever, and and would they would fall in love with the culture, and then they would find a woman, and then once they got out of the military, and or if they wanted to, you know, find a duty station closer, they'd end up going there, marrying them, and live a wonderful life. Like, there you go. There you go. There a lot you go. of a lot of military men did that. There you go. And I'm gonna give this segment to my boy CB Smith as the segment winner. CB Smith, you get final words before we get to the shiftless and niggardly award. CB Smith. So my final my final word is actually more of a more of a question because I appreciate the angry vet for you know uh, camming up and uh, joining us in this conversation. First off. I appreciate the beard, man. That beard game is strong, dog. Um, thank you, thank you. Secondly, um, my final word again is a question. My question to you is, do you think that considering what we're contending with, with the modern Western woman, that men that grab their passport and go and try to find something elsewhere you know um is this the is this the right approach that we should be taking or should I, we reserve ourselves for american american women that's a good question i mean i think we need to try a little harder i mean i think it's it's kind of you know it's a two-sided coin right i mean there's just as many douchebags douchebag men's men as there are you know twat waffles right so twat waffles <laughs> so, so you gotta i i think that if we i'm not calling us all lazy but i'm saying if we weren't as lazy as we are um i think putting a little more effort into you know staying close to home and finding the right women should be the first step right i mean Unless you, you want to go outside, bring them back in and and start your own thing. But I think leaving leaving the United States, that's a that's a slippery slope, you know, because even though I fight for freedom, period, end of story. And 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 I and I always say, well, this is a free country. We all know it's very hard to say that considering how the government keeps us you know under check and all but i don't think you're gonna find the 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 freedoms that we have here anywhere else might be happier living in that little tiny village with your magnificent you know filipino wife taiwanese wife or whatever um but one day you're going to run into a problem where you're going to have to come back because you can't you can't deal with what's going on over there or you can't you got in trouble because you did something that would never even be considered getting you in trouble here so so thank you thank you for your service um and just to be clear when I ask the question, I'm asking, uh, uh, and I'm talking about passport bros. I'm talking about the brothers that go out and meet women from another, you know, country, ethnic group, whatever the case may be, and bring them back here. So, okay. Again, my question is: Do you think that we are doing a disservice to ourselves when we're looking outside of our American women, or have our Western values or lack thereof? right lack their lack their of values and character or when women are concerned i prefer to use the word virtue has forced the uh the male gender to go looking for something that he can actually work with and build with well when you look at i mean is it really like because when you look at passport bros i mean What's the percentage on on black males going outside of the country Very to small. do it? I mean, it's like Very a one. Small. 
Yeah. Like, so it's kind of like looking it's at not the even 1%. Yeah. Right. It's a 1% or a 0.1% or whatever. So in, in, in all actuality, I mean, who's really forcing you to do like, are you really being forced to do it or so are you just so not just looking be, hard enough? So you know? just to be, so just to be clear uh, for me personally, I'm yeah. not specifically talking about black men. I'm talking about American men because okay. You know, I, I think that, you know, uh, black culture is a culture inside of American culture. And I'm just talking about American men overall. OK. Do you, do you think that we're doing a disservice when we leave our American Western minded women and go and try to find something that we perceive to be better elsewhere? I don't think so, because that's you. I mean, it's 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 personal. I mean, if you feel that's what like because i'm gonna do whatever the fuck i want to do if i wanted to go do it i'm gonna right, do right, it and i'm hey, gonna hey, be happy hey, 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 right? no more uh, let's not drop the f-bomb in the beat uh, my bad it's it's you, the way i talk you, i'll try yeah, to keep you, you can use every other word but you two really don't like those two so and we already struggle streaming so. i'm sorry i'm sorry it's a force of habit it's my yeah, I got you. 10 years in a seagoing service. Boy. Yo, Angry Vet, are you going to stick with us? Because we're going to transition to the next part. He got to do the Sands Award. We got some more to catch up on. So, Mr. Life, we know you want to get yeah, your Sands Roar. Yeah. yeah, we got about yeah and then we're still going to do the drink review after that. And then, yeah. so, if you want to rock with us, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of drinking with you, Angry Vet. So, let's run it. Yeah, we got about another hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30. So we, so yeah, we and we got to run the second hours. half of the show. We're yeah. going to get the intro. Yeah. So just sit back. We got you. And we're going to run the, the intro for the second half of the show. All yeah. right. I'm going to jump off of here real quick. And I'll just, I'll watch. And then I'm going to have to bounce when she comes in and wants to go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Well, all right. I got you. Hey, so just in, just in, just in case he's not able to chime back in. Can we get a final word from the angry vet? Yeah, angry vet, final word on you. That's what's up. Peace, love, happiness, and uh, F the man. F the man. <laughs> <laughs> angry vet, I, I know the reason why I like you, my man. Man, you right here. <laughs> man, you right here. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. I'll, I'll keep watching. Yeah, nice having you. Angry Vet is hilarious, man. I absolutely love it, man. <laughs> all right, man, let's get to it, man. You all, whoo. So uh, Kamala Harris, vice president. All right, BG, you want to change that up for me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right. We So we going to which section? Um, Kamala? Sands. Yeah, yeah, Sands. sands. Yeah. Let's run yeah. the Sands. Yeah, yeah. We so in the Kamala, Sands. There you Kamala, go. Kamala Harris, vice president, was being interviewed about women's sports. And well, just like Joe Biden, when she began to go off script, shit didn't go as planned. Let's watch and see why she gets the Sands Award tonight. Let's watch it. Oh, okay. A bit of a history lesson. <laughs> Do you know that women were not, the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? Think about that and what that talk about progress, you know, better late than never, but progress. But you know what, just the, how we love, we love March Madness and even just now allowing the women to have brackets and what that does to encourage people to talk more about the women's teams, to watch them. Now they're being covered, you know, and, and this is the reality. People used to say, oh, women's sports, who's interested? Well, if you can't see it, you won't be. But when you see it, you realize, oh. <laughs> look, look, I get it, right? Most women, most women really don't watch sports, let alone women's sports. Hell, most men that's into sports don't even watch women's sports. I get it. But for her to go off script and to stay on script and her team not give her the script about the script and tell her don't say no BS like this is one of the most shiftless and niggerly things I ever saw. I give a shiftless and niggerly awards to 
to to miss Kamala Harris as vice president. I give a shiftless and niggerly award to her team. I give a shiftless and niggerly award to the guy that to the guy that's actually interviewing her and asking her this question because he knew he was setting this woman up for failure. He saw her set herself up. She, he saw her fail so many times with dumb questions like this right here and go off script and don't know what the hell she talking about half the time. For her to say that bracket started in two, 2002, she absolutely, absolutely knows nothing about sports, let alone women's sports. So for her to be the advocate of women's sports and not know anything about one of the most prominent women's sports out there, you get the shiftless and niggardly award, Vice President Kamala Harris. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now what she said, 2022, <laughs> two years ago, not even 2002, yeah, yeah. 2022, yeah, yeah. 2022, two years ago, we started back. Ago. All these, she's seen 64 teams. She was like, you know what? We've been discriminated on. I know we got the same amount of teams the men have, but something ain't right about it. I just got to speak on it because it feel like the men got more. When I do the math, and the man got 64 and we got 64 plus the four that playing the play in is 68. I just, it ain't the math ain't math. And I did it 10 times and they got 68. And we got, but our 68 feel different. It feel real different. They've been discriminating on us for a long time. What is she talking about? But she is the same vice president that had people twerking at the vice presidential uh, mansion. That so we're going to let that be there. So. Mm. She deserves the Sands Award tonight. Uh, ladies, forgive me, but when I saw this, I had no other choice but to run with it for the Sands Award. And I think my guys started a membership, where, and you know what you do whenever you give money to this ministry. We got to bring out the girls. We're going to get the girls up here for you, my guy. I hope you like some ratchetness and some good old-fashioned booty shaking, and we're going to get right at it with the girls right now. Thanks for your offering, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Struggle streaming all over the internet. Hey, look, Angry Man loved that. He said, "Let's go. We should run it back. You know, let's do a Florida style run it back. We gotta like run it back club. because he let's he I, hold one second. He gifted ten memberships to ten people. So once again, if you want a membership from some of the inside exclusive stuff, he has gifted ten memberships. So if you want in, make sure you." I don't even know, know how this works, but email us at masturbations at gmail.com and I give you one of those memberships. So once again, BG Paul, can you give them that email while, while I run the girls back? <laughs> For your offering, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> we had to run it back for him again. We had to run it back for him again because the girls are always wonderful. I am working on another one for you all, and you're going to absolutely love this one. I found some girls that are going to blow your mind because I know I know a lot of you all or might be in sales or something along the lines and don't get to see booty jiggle like that in a regular on an everyday basis or sit in front of your face. So we at Man Made Media are going to try to bring it for you every time you give. Because we don't have no, uh, what's the name of that? We don't have OnlyFans over here. Yeah. It's only so, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, man Made Media and, TV. And we ain't doing none of that. For real, no Diddy over here. So, no Diddy. No, no diddy. diddy. Let's get into the second half of the show and we'll come back with the drink review and we're going to jump into some anton daniels and we have two or three more segments after that so let's get to it welcome to mansplanations network where we figure ish out hosted by mr life co-starring bad gemini 
Dari Amari. Where we struggle streaming all over the YouTubes, the Facebooks, all over the internets. Hell, we even struggle streaming on MySpace. The most shadow banned of the shadow banned talk shows in their history of being shadow banned. Time for your main event. Let's figure it out. All right, all right. Oh, we're, yeah. going to, we're going to give it to my guy, Mr. Bad Gemini, for tonight's drink review. And then we'll come back with Anton Daniels and the black community. Yo, so what we rocking with today? Noble Oak. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus. Maybe there you go. Noble Oak. This is 90 proof right so 45 percent alcohol 750 ml this bourbon right here is finished with sherry oak staves right you have little staves in there real good flavor as that balance right you have a lot of uh i would say bourbons that are just very oaky that wood flavor i haven't even tasted this yet so i'm busting it open for y'all right now no ditty as they would say so i'm opening this fine beverage for y'all so let me taste and let you know how it is off the of first sip just smelling it it's very light you can you can tell the difference of it's not as woody when you smell some right and just the oak and all that that sherry does make a difference a little undertone of vanilla let's sip it and see what it tastes like This here, I would say, has a good body. It doesn't burn me. Um, look, I have it just dripping all down here, right? So, pause, right? But anyhow, I would say off a of first sip, this is a good, good, just clean, maybe one ice cube. Doesn't have any burn. You can taste the influence of the sherry staves in there. It has a good proof at 90. This is a tasty liquor. I would say it runs, I got it on sale, but this runs anywhere from 30 to 40 bucks, right? So when we do these reviews, we try to have a good price point. Anything that's from 25 to 55 bucks. We know they're heavy hitter li liquors and whiskeys out there, but we try to have stuff that's affordable and everybody can enjoy without breaking your budget. This is Noble Oak, Double Oak bourbon right you see look i have liquor spilling all now now i'm slizzy right now it's like sap coming from the tree let me sip this last one for y'all just to give you the final review it has an earthy element to it it goes down clean the bite comes in later i would say um this is from bad gemini's review a very tasty a good midpoint bourbon i would suggest you try it it's worth it it's not like it's an exorbitant amount of money um very clean product of the usa obviously enjoy it this is a good old noble oak bourbon you can get it total wine abc any of your local neighborhood liquor stores that's my review have fun and drink safely and don't be out here behind the wheel acting stupid and once again, we apologize for the internet and the services tonight. Everybody is cutting up because we live in Florida. And if you know anything about Florida, we have something called sideways rain. And when that sideways rain come, it doesn't matter what you have over your head. The umbrella doesn't even matter at that point in time because it's literally coming at you sideways. It's going to give you an uppercut every now and then. Yep, I even saw rain that scooped down and came up. I, I don't know how it does that around here, but rain does some strange things. Around what here you got Florida. a dry top and wet feet? You like, dang, I had it at the right. You have to hold. You have the the Morton's girl. You know when you look at the Morton's bottle of salt and she holding it at an angle. That's how we walk in Florida. All our umbrellas at an angle, trying to beat the rain. Trying to beat the rain. You try to figure it out where to get at the right point in time. Cause no matter, it's gonna just start coming in all different types of ways, man. We, our our uh, house sits about eight inches off the floor. I mean, off our uh, ground. So you have to step up when you come in. And literally, the sideway rain started coming in and it went right up on our door. It just literally just, <laughs> it was no water outside on the, <laughs> it just started coming in. I'm like, how? Like, what is this? 
<laughs> all right, man. Let's get Nuts. to it. Let's let's get to it, man. Do you all think that black that pro black people are good for the community? Um, I, I sometimes know, I feel they're more divisive. I'm gonna just leave it at that. I know CB Smith might have a lot to say about this one. Uh, yeah. How about no? <laughs> <laughs> well, Anton Daniels, all but one of the best YouTubers out there, has some things to say about pro blacks in the community. Let's watch and figure out is he spot on or is he spot off. Once again, we're gonna figure out if he's spot on or spot off. Let's get to it. That label themselves pro black are hypocrites. They'll tell you just because I'm pro something doesn't mean I'm against this. The reality is that most of them can't even agree on what it means to be pro-black in the first place. Can you be pro-black and still have a difference of opinion? Can you be pro-black and still marry outside of your race? Can you be pro-black by not labeling yourself pro-black but still being married to a black woman? Can you be pro-black and not even be black? Can you be pro-black and still have sold drugs in your community? Most of the people that say that they pro-black also had children out of wedlock. I'm so confused. If most of the people say that they pro-black can't even agree on the thing that they say makes them pro-black, then how can we have a standard for whether or not you can be or can't be anything? Also, if you don't agree with them, then most of the rhetoric that they have is against people that don't agree with them that's black. So let me get this straight. I could be a father married to a black woman for 20 years, also employ 98% black people, including majority women. But then at the same time, you could say that you're more pro-black than me based off of your talking points, right? Is being pro-black a talking point or is it a lifestyle? Because the Oh, I wish Mr. T was still here. Oh, wow. I wish Mr. Yeah. T was still here. Because his, you oh, know he coming at your boy, Dr. Umar. You know who oh, he coming Oh, boy. At. You know he coming after Dr. Umar. So let's get to it. Spot on or spot off, Bad Gemini? I would say it's spot on um, because the thing is, when I hear a lot of these pro-black talking points, I hear a lot of division. Right now, I would not be considered to be pro-black. You know why? Because my wife is not fully black. Matter of fact, she's not black at all, right? She got Guyanese background, white dad, Guyanese mother. They'd be like, oh, my gosh, look at him. He's outside of his race. But you have to understand, I'm born in America, but my mom is a Haitian uh, 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 was a Haitian mother, right? So when you look at the distinction, she actually relates to my wife's mom when you're talking about third world country, right? So the relation is there, but they would still say, oh, but you're black in America. And you know what? You're not pro-black. Even though my ex-wife was black and I have two black kids, they'd be like, you still ain't pro-black because you ain't go to a black woman the second time. So it's all nonsense. Look, if you want to know the black test, I'm not going to get into that because women like the six, six, and six. But anyway, minimum. But you know, I'm done. I can't go. That's trouble. We we not good for. But I'm black as you can get because I'm from South Florida and um, I love my black folks. But if I'm not pro black to you, we can have a real discussion, Doctor Dumas. You know how to find us, Mister Life. You're black just because you're niggerish and you don't know how to act. So we don't even have to ask this question to you. <laughs> CB Smith, where you stand on this? I I already kind of know, but give me some insight. <laughs> give me a little bit more depth to it. For you, well, pro black, <laughs> pro black is a northern and west coast inner city doctrine for females, pookies, and gays. That's a stretch right there. That's a stretch. Cause when he was okay to he threw some other stuff in there. Like this is like <laughs> Honestly, honestly, as I'm looking at it, I don't know that he really stretched that much at all. Nah, that's BLM. I, that's different. Now once you start throwing every category, because BLM is gonna give it a conjumble of 15 categories. Now we ain't even talking pro black right now. But uh, I'll let you talk. Go ahead, CB Smith. What you gonna say about it? Well, <laughs> I agree with you. I do think that that things get jumbled up. But when I look at the fact that uh, Dr. Cornell West is running for the pres the office of president's uh, presidency of the United States, and I look at who his VP selection was, then it, you know, it all ties together. His VP selection was the co-founder of BLM. So, oh, you know, um, there we go. There we go. See, there we go. There we go. Man. There we go. Yeah. 
So I guess we I guess we both agree on this one. CB Smith in a, a weird way. <laughs> Dude, the Black Panthers were a communist political group and a majority female and and a majority female. Yep. So, but I'm gonna go with the angry vet because I th I think he said it right. Even being a white boy, he had it right. You are not pro black if you don't bring nothing to the barbecue. Man, that's a <laughs> you gotta bring something to the barbecue. That's even hilarious. if it just plays. Even if it just plays the solo club. You crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot show up to a black barbecue and not bring nothing. They want to call you niggerly and shiftless. And you know they playing it for themselves. Ain't that something that black people do though? They, they like, man, I'm throwing a barbecue. And so you show up with nothing, then they get mad at you because you didn't bring nothing. You and, and you like you told me you was throwing a barbecue. You didn't tell me to bring nothing. <laughs> and you leaving with three plates. That's what really you know makes you mad. You know you what? Still I am. leaving with three plates. You ain't bringing nothing. Still leaving with three plates. Because you should have known you was on the barbecue and not me <laughs> that's why that's why i like to go to barbecues with my white folks because they put they potato yes, salad and, and they put the raisins in there and they oh, might drop gosh. some pineapples <laughs> apples and they're gonna, they gonna use that miracle wheel <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing ain't nothing a miracle about that whip the way they use it they just they did a it's terrible when you do uh, did a better job of using a whip to beat black folks than to make a recipe using miracle whip that is a sad sad situation when the best use of the whip was flicking it rather than whipping it gosh dang that's a damn shame oh god oh god but i think cb smith was right though I think it was right. I think both of you all was right because let's be honest, the BLM movement was you. Well, it wasn't usurped. They just started off as the LGBTQ movement. Man, I don't know what to say about this one right here. I'm just totally lost. But I think being, but I think he is right about being pro-black. You can't. I think pro. I think he's right. Pro-black is just a simple set of talking points. If you don't have those set of talking points, you can't be pro-black. You cannot be. You can't show action like what we're doing over here on Man Made Media TV, where we're going out trying to find black men and interview black men that's being successful, that's being great, that's doing extraordinary things inside their life. life. Now, nah, that's not being pro-black, but what's being pro-black is being Dr. Umar Johnson and talking about building a school and just taking all the money and just giving it to yourself and your whores. That's what's being pro-black about. There's nothing pro-black about what we're doing over here. There's nothing pro-black about what we're doing over here. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. We're trying to get black men to actually get inside this space, help them grow themselves, help them learn how to be in front of the camera. It doesn't matter where you come from. We're still trying to help you come on. Yeah, we might not have the biggest followers, but who cares? At least you get the practice. But that's not being pro-black. I mentor you young know men. You being pro-black, Mr. Life? What, sir? Uh, <clears throat> Procreate, cause we pros at creating a lot of damn babies <laughs> and leaving them <laughs> and leaving their hands right there. <laughs> we are pros at creating. That is not accurate, sir. <laughs> that is not accurate, sir. I didn't put the leaving according, part. According, Smith, according to but studies, we know how to create. According babies. to the studies, right now the black male is the most active and engaged in the relationship dynamic with their kids. You are totally right about it being the most active and, and engaged, but when they are there. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That part, that one. <laughs> but we know we are pros well, at creating. I mean, so let's so let's have the conversation to be active and to be active and and engaged. You have to actually be there. And according to the statistics, black men are actually making a valiant attempt to show up for their offspring. Now, with that you being right. said, with that you being right. said, we still have to call into question our decision making, because <laughs> when you look at it, when you look at it, black women, black <laughs> women have the highest rate of single motherhood of any group inside of the United States. If I'm not mistaken, um, it is now at about 48% in 2024, but it was 59% in 2011. So the numbers are actually 
the numbers are actually starting to come down favorably towards black women. And I think largely the reason why those numbers are coming down favorably towards black women is because black men are working to be more engaged and being a constant presence in the life of their kids. And I give it, you're right. Single motherhood. <clears throat> There's a lot of single mothers in the hood. I will agree with you, but go ahead, Mr. Life. I would not deter anybody from throwing stones at these single mothers that I actually go out and have kids and get kids from men that, that don't want them. I'm going to tell you all the story that just happened to me on Wednesday. Quick side story. One of my little men, one of the guys that I am mentoring, I sit down and have a conversation with him. He finally found the girl that he likes. And he said that they flew to like Cancun or something. And then he goes on to tell me that they had sex. And I asked, did he use a condom? And then he said, no, but she don't want any kids. And then he goes on to tell me, he says this now, right? He he says this, and she also t told me, if I come at her and she get pregnant, she's gonna keep that. She's gonna keep it. <laughs> and as the conversation goes along, he also then come back and tells me. He tells me, and he tells me this, right? When they have sex unprotected, she tells him to come in her. Tells him the two come in her. <clears throat> Uh, what the fuck? So I asked him how old was she, and she says he said that she's twenty seven. I looked at him and said, "Sir, you are no longer the predator. You are the prey, and you don't understand the you don't you don't understand the rules of engagement." She don't pull smoking mirrors over your eyes and gave you some of that wet wet and told you to hit it raw and telling you that she don't want any kids, but yet still at the same time telling you to come in her when you know that you are having unprotected sex. But she's holding her, but 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 she's already hold you accountable by telling you that she already told you if she gets pregnant, she's going to keep the kid. You don't get the game that's you don't get the game that's being played right now, and you're being played all over the field, and you really don't get it. Now, with, now, how I see this playing out is a lot like how CB says CB Smith been talking right now. Most likely, she's going to get pregnant, have a kid. He told her that he doesn't want to have a kid. She's going to get mad because now he's going to want to break up with her. They're going to break up. And then sometime down the line, he's going to want to see his kid, but she's not going to allow him to see the kid because she's still mad at him because she had a kid and kind of, quote, unquote, trapped him when it's not really a trap because she kind of led with, I'm going to have the kid. So she acquitted herself. And now, we have a, and, and now we have a problem, right, of a deadbeat dad and her saying that he doesn't take care of his kid, knowing that he could take care of the kid, but she don't want him to let him see the kid because he don't want to be with her because he feels like she trapped him. But all the while, she told him that she would do this, and he fell for it all over again. Mr. Mr. C.B. Smith. Hold on, before he chimes in. Hold on. I was going to ask you what's the moral of the story, Mr. Life, but this story the has no morals. Story, yeah, That's the moral, the moral story, of the story. This story has no exercise morals. Exercise the discipline. At its finest. <laughs> the moral of the story, this is how we end up having this conversation about this black men. Terrible. Do we take care of our kids or not? Because a dumb sh like this crossed the board. It's all stupidity. This You're right, C.B. Smith. D-discipline. <clears throat> That's a raggedy yeah. story. It but he keeps going story. raw, don't he? He keeps going <laughs> raw. And you know how it's going to end, right? It's going to end literally how I said it did. <laughs> yeah, she, she, he he going to be on child support and she going to find, she going to get collect his child support and then find another man to raise his baby. I mean, we know how this is going to try to. See, and that's the big problem now because like black men ain't trying to, be, black men ain't trying to be stepdaddies no more. They ain't signing up for that no more. But she's 27. She's 27. So I asked him, do she have any friends that's getting married or having kid, kids? He said, no, not her friends, but her cousins are. I want I want to make I want to make an amendment to my statement because I'm not sure that I made the mistake. I'm not sure that I made the statement clear and concisely. Actually, uh the statistics that I was I was quoting was on black women having kids from multiple fathers. And it sounds like this brother has put himself in a position where he's potentially going to be be number uh, one. one one <laughs> of multiple fathers that this woman has kids with. And so again, it goes back to D-discipline.
<laughs> he's going to be number one. <laughs> yeah, but- he's 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 going to be number one. And sadly, the, there's a there is a disparity between us and everybody else, right? So black women have more than twice the number of kids with multiple fathers of almost any other ethnic group apart from the Hispanic women. Listen, when it comes to our sexual appetite and our ability to operate with discipline and restraint, we as a people of color, we're not winning. We are not. We are not. We are not. We are not. <clears throat> C.B. Smith, you knocked them out the park, so I give it to you again for the final thoughts. <clears throat> final thoughts. Get a handle on your sexual appetite because you're going to end up with a final thought. And <laughs> she's going to make your life miserable, bro. She's going to make your life miserable. Them child support payments don't end for 18 years, bro. So do better. Get a control on it. Oh, man, please do better. Please do better. Ooh, man, let's get to it. Let's get to the next video here. We got two more to get to, so we're going to have to speed it up here. We're going to have to speed this one up, so let's get to it. Let's find the next one. Here it is. Oh, is marriage a good thing or a bad thing for society? Let me ask you all that. Ooh, real so we on the marriage one or we on speculative check at this part of it? No, 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 no. Go to marriage. Go to the Lord. All right, we got you. Yeah, go so, to the um, <clears throat> Yeah. Is it a good thing or bad thing? Yeah. It's a necessity. Goodness. How many more holes we need out here? Gosh, dog, it's a necessity. <sighs> well, Unless you I, single and exercise de discipline, as CB Smith said. Go ahead, Mr. Light. Well, high profile divorce lawyer James Sexton went on soft white belly, soft white, soft white un- underbelly, and had some things to say about the current state of marriage. Let's watch and figure out is marriage outdated tech or up to date tech? Let's get to it. Down fundamentally, 56% of marriages end in divorce. Like, think about that's the ones that end in divorce. So, how many people, what percentage stay together for the kids? Or because they don't want to give away half their shit. Another 10%? That's conservative. Conservative. But let's say, let's say 20% then. Yeah, okay. That's, that's at least right. You now have a technology that fails 76% of the time. That's insane. That's insane. That's more likely than not. 76 If I told you there's a 76% chance when you walk out the door today, you're gonna get hit in the head with a bowling ball, you would not go out or you'd wear a helmet for sure. But People just continue to get married. Not only do they continue to get married, there's a presumption that you should get married. And if you don't get married, there's something wrong with you. So if you've got a girlfriend and you've been with her for five years and you say to someone, we're getting married, they go, oh, that's great. You know, they don't go, why? You're happy. Why would you get married? Like everything's going fine. Why would you put yourself through that? Why would you run that risk? If you say to someone, we've been together five years and we've decided we're not going to get married. We're going to move in together, but we're not going to get married. Ooh, what's wrong? You have intimacy issues? What's your problem? Meanwhile, 56% end in divorce. It's, it's literally fits the legal definition of negligence. So once again, link, link is in the chat. So if you want to come up and have a conversation about marriage being a failed technology, the link is inside the chat. I'll drop it again to give you a chance to come on up and talk to us about this. So is this an outdated tech or is this an up-to-date tech? Let's get it going. Dang, when you put tech in there, it confuses me because I'm like, what does, uh, am I, is AI involved in my marriage? Like I'm all confused when I'm in like, AI, how you think I'm going to do today when I tell my wife she working my nerves? Like, so <laughs> um, to be honest, I, I look at it like um, it's, it's always going to be in style. Like, uh, it's always going to be up to date. The thing about it is people's decision makings are out of date. And so we got to just man up from a man and woman perspective and make better decisions and you get better results. We can't expect better results from poor decisions. So when we start having these discussions about a whole bunch of people that making poor results, then, you know, it's going to be a bad discussion. So that's how I look at it. Like, wait your time. We always talk on the show. You ain't got to get married in your 20s. 
If you want to be whole, be the best whole you can be for a decade straight. From 20 to 30, you can be whole a year, every year, 10 years running. But then when it's time to slow down, get your life together, hopefully you don't have two and three kids by then. And then you still be a viable candidate and hopefully your marriage will be much more successful because you would have all the experiences, lived out all the things you wanted to do and dated all the type of the men or women you wanted to date. And you can come to a good conclusion. But what happens is people don't do all of that. It's seen as a bad thing. They jump in these marriages without experiences. They make poor decisions. They don't know how to be husband and wife. And it's downhill. And it's a repeated cycle, Mr. Life. But to answer your question, I would say it's up to date. But the decision making is damn sure terrible. It's the application of the uh, technology that's been the problem mm -hmm. right now. C.B. Mm -hmm. Smith, what you got to say about it? And, 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 oh, the word technology doesn't mean have, it doesn't actually have to do with anything electronics is for the advancement of the overall environment and the and your place where you live or something like that but so that could be anything so that's why marriage is considered to be a technology it's anything that could advance your your total in advance your whole um i can't come up with the word right now but it it gets people to move along that basically that's what it's about so everything is a technology. Like when they started farming and they were spending seeds inside the ground, that was the, that was technology because it changed their environment. C.B. Smith. Spiritual, spiritual decision that's being corrupted and perverted by unnatural, or let me let me state this differently by natural unchecked desires so, so hold on a second so you think it's outdated or you think it's up to date or are you going to wait to give it to me no i i i never think that it's going to be outdated i think what it <clears throat> needs to be outdated is our outlook on it and i think we're looking at a spiritual thing through fleshly desires and disappointed when we when we receive fleshly outcomes so i'm trying to follow you now so y you would consider marriage to be more about a religious or spiritual thing i don't care anything about religion so my answer is is that you know it's a spiritual I'm thing trying to follow yeah yeah and i'm trying to and, I, and i'm and i'm trying to lead the, the way on this conversation i think that marriage is something that is spiritual i think that it's something that was god ordained and because we won't uh we won't get our natural desires get our flesh in check then we are attempting to corrupt and pervert something that has every intention of being beautiful and blossoming and you know creating something that can advance and improve society as a whole but our lack of ability to bridle ourselves or willingness to bridle ourselves is casting a shadow <clears throat> on something that was designed and intended to be beautiful well, well i'm glad you said that because when because i want to give a little pushback here especially when you talk about from the spiritual standpoint of view. And I'm assuming that you're a man that reads the Bible because marriage had a technical fu function, even inside the Bible. It was a technical function. Uh, Solomon had over 300 wives. So that wasn't spiritual. That was a technical function to actually make sure that no other kingdom would attack, would attack him because he had the daughters there and it was agreement among kingdoms that he take on their daughters so that they can have fair trade. So it was something that was technically built to make sure that it kept their society moving. It had nothing to do with religion or love. I mean, spirituality or love. It was literally, I marry your daughter. If you give me 100 pounds of grain and we can build some trade routes. What are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> My thoughts on that is, is that when you talk about Solomon, you're talking about um, a man that was uh, noted as being the wisest man in all of history. So while it still had its spiritual practicality, 
I think looking at it through natural eyes and understanding how we can leverage this thing, being that, you know, um, there was nothing at that time that would call it to be a taboo. Um, I, I, I think that it was a wise practice on Solomon's part. But even outside Solomon, if, if we look at a lot of marriages that's not going on in America right now, they are technically done by arrangement and there's nothing spiritual about it. This is simply people saying, hey, your family got money, mine got money, let me pay you this dowry or let me give you this bride gifts or something like that and let these two get married. I think the pros of their marriages is that from what the stats show, they actually stay married a lot longer, but nothing about that is spiritual. So, uh, so, so on that, on that point, I'll, I'll agree with you, but the part that's spiritual is that it's always been about, uh, uh, being progenitors, right. And, and promoting, uh, the advancement of a lineage. Right. And so I think we lose sight of that. I think that we lose sight of the value systems that honor that. And, you know, we just want to ski. Mr. T, dropping knowledge. Mr. T ain't dropping no no, knowledge. No, 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 no. We got C.B. Smith, a.k.a. Charlie Lama, a.k.a. The Wordsmith. Progenitors. That, oh, my God, hit us with one there. That's what's up. That's what's, but... Uh, me but you know what no forget the spiritual part you know what because when i'm saying that, i'm not doing it and saying it in a negligent way we have to look at when it comes to adam he had no say so he woke up and was like look this gonna be your boo that's it there was nothing <laughs> no spiritual so about it just because it was god was involved we acting like we say that's the spiritual aspect but the reality is he didn't have any say so it's like so dowries are really like god was like look you're gonna take this woman that's that Y'all going to figure it out. And so when she jammed up, it was easy for him to be like, yo, God, you gave her to me. Like, I was minding my own business. I ain't, I ain't want no woman. You said it was not good for a man to be alone. You gave me a woman who was trifling. She got enticed by a long snake because she didn't think my snake was long enough. She bit all of these apples. I had two apples for her. She didn't want no parts of that. And now we out here getting banished. So, you know, so it's like, look, we can make it like his love was involved. He couldn't know he loved because he woke up and she was there. So love was not involved. We can't make it spiritual because he woke up and there's like, here, here's your help me. So she going to be a helper. It was nothing about spiritual. It was like, be help, be available, and, and y'all grow together. So, yeah, we emphasize the spiritual, but even the Bible in this beginning, when you talk about relationship with man and woman, showed you he ain't really have much of a say. So she needed to be a help me. And then, um, you know, hey. I can go on and on, but that's that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. You said something. Hold, hold on a second. You said something about my boy Adam, right? Do you think that God actually gave gave him the third six, or do you, <laughs> after God he didn't know, him? <laughs> the thing is, he didn't know what he was lacking or not, because it's like they were the only two. Not until he could have been terrible. Around. Not until the snake <laughs> came around, and then she measured. <laughs> Look, she saw like that snake got to talking good. Like me. this snake is lost. She's like, look at this long snake talking that good talk to me. She was like, your snake can't even talk. I'm impressed. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, she... y'all, y'all just on y'all just on y'all just on the level of recklessness. I'm gonna leave y'all out like, there. Like, it's nothing reckless. I don't know what I said that was reckless. I said it in a succinct fashion that came straight to the point. Whereas he had no Real say. Succinct. So that's true. You want to try? You want to put the two C's, the I and the T for that. So, but anyways, you know it's the S U, and you know you. I just gave you the rest. But anyway, so that's not what we're talking about. And yes, I throw the T in the back end because you got to finish with the succinct or with the silent T, but it's not silent. But that's not what we're talking about. You're not gonna throw me off. The point is, when I said what I said, it was straight to the point. That is the truth. He woke up. He had no say. So here's your boo. She was designed to be a help me. So where is their love when somebody gives you somebody? And then when they give you a designation of that person designed to be a help me, that's what dowries are. It's like, look, I'm going to give you this woman here. We're going to bridge our families together. We're going to accumulate this wealth. And that's where we're going to go. So we always emphasize love. But did can we really say you never saw anywhere where it was like, oh, Adam love Eve. 
He I probably had the I tolerator. Okay, but you, I mean, you when you, you want to come spiritual from a spiritual aspect, it's love. So he had the tolerator. So why? So you talking about with spirituality? There's no love involved. So I hear C B Smith, but nah, man. When you really look at the whole situation, nah, man. Hey, love is a bonus. But if you got a business mindset, you can build something even without love. So when 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 we look at a, when we look at a world through the lens of you know, the creation story, right? And there's nothing else out there that represents or looks like you. How challenging do you think it was for him to connect her, with her in that way and determine that this is the woman that I love? So how challenging was it for Adam to uh, connect yeah, with her? The, See, it's a challenge already. He had he had to repeat the question and buy himself time. To yeah, because if I just talk, if I talk, no, the thing is, I can answer recklessly. So you want me to put thought into you or just want me to come off the cuff? Because then I'm going to give you a fake answer with a real life a, a scenario. No, I'm fin I want to answer your direct question. So look, when it comes to that, this is it. He didn't know what love was. He knew what God's <clears throat> love was. A love for a woman, he didn't know that. And I think when you talk about a lot of men, they don't know what a love for a woman is. You have to get in that situation. So his love developed on the fly because his love was all God related. So when you say, go ahead, this is your woman lover, I'm like, what that look like? I don't know what that is. So you got to interact, chill, vibe, and then bomb. There you go. Then you start discovering what love looks like for you. But that's the scenario with a lot of men. If you ask men, like, what does love look like? We'll give you generic answers. But till you get in that relationship with a woman, you don't know what love looks like. You have to live it out. And so I think that's what happened with Adam. He had to live it out and see if he loved her. But then he realized he still can compete, can compete with a longer snake. So in the long run, he still <laughs> lost all. And that's the downfall for Adam. Damn listen, it, Adam. You let the long snake get you. Listen, we got to call attention to this comment by Slick Rick. Man, get out of here with that Bible thumping mess. And then he followed up with even Jesus said marriage was hard, not for everywhere, not for everyone. Matthew 19 and 11. And you know what? I How the Bible it. thumper come with a darn verse right after it? He gonna right. say with that he come with support. I was, gonna, I I was just gonna facts. gloss right past that. I was gonna gloss right past that because you show you know, with supporting facts, right? You supported me, or you? I'm confused. I guess we're on the same team, Slick Rick. I'm confused. Hey, listen, listen, facts. listen sl sl slick, slick Rick over here with 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 our boy Radio. He like, I take both of them, Coach. <laughs> I take both, I Coach. Take both of them, coach. He, he's straddling the fence. He on both sides of the argument. <laughs> this man came. I don't know who he's supporting, me himself or the whole greater argument. Look, all I know is when it comes to this relationship, love is a bonus, honestly, because. On this on this show, on this network, on this platform, we talk about making a deal before. Like we don't talk about the love aspect because you have to make a deal, get mad, M.A.D. and make a deal. And then so making a deal requires you put in certain efforts um, to make it successful. If you love each other, that's helpful. But the thing is, there are a lot of people who love each other, but they can't tolerate each other because they have not made a a valid deal to build on their relationship and so all right it, that's what it comes down to all right hush your mouth man listen it's get, it's I getting late talk, i gotta i gotta be up early i'm gonna get this one the back gemini because you know what at this hour i ain't afraid to concede you know usually i'd I, i'd go back and forth with you but you know what i'm gonna let you have this one final words back gemini <laughs> <laughs> you gonna throw me an alley -oop. i guess i better slam dunk it so when Struggle. it comes to modern day, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is hilarious. I'm gonna say this: when it comes to modern day relationships and and people talking about love, um, the definition of love has evolved so much that it confuses people even within their own relationships that they've had for years. So what you have to do is make a deal, do the things that you know she likes and you like. 
And if it's same sex, you know, yada, yada, same thing. Do the things y'all like, right? Build from there and grow. Because love, you will want to love each other. Love is a, a nice feeling, a nice emotion, but that doesn't guarantee success. So for people who are looking for love to be a successful relationship, it takes more than that. For people who put in a lot of effort and they have a, a roommate type situation without no love, that's not fun either. So find that fine balance, love and work. When you put both of them together, you have a greater level of success for your relationship. Hey, I, I, I think BG just admitted that he's going to vote for Carnell West and this co-founder of the BLM. He talked about same-sex marriages and tried to normalize it. Like that, like that ish ain't weird. You see, I glossed over. I, I got to be. Motherfucker. Hey. Hey, you I know what the, the you know no CB Smith, hold on. This is what I learned from from people who said they're successful businessmen. I can't get in anybody else's business, man. There you go. So let's run it, man. Hey, let's get it popping, Mister Life. Let's run it, man. Boy, y'all are hilarious tonight, man. I was thinking about being Adam. You actually had God create you, and then you wake up and you look down, and you, you ain't got six. How you feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he ain't have nothing else to measure it against. So it was, whatever he was was the standard until something better came along. Came That's along? the whole point. But I know he was pissed off when he found out. He was like, man. Oh, yeah. When, when, when the snake came, he's like, hold on. So you want me to compete with this six-foot-long snake who can talk? He started looking down like, mine can't talk. Like, yeah, man, you got that Eve. That's all you. I can't make my snake talk. That's all you. Boy, y'all hilarious. He right, won I this. Go there with y'all, but I refuse. <laughs> this is man, what's way, the last segment? Way man, too Mr. easy. <laughs> this is way too easy. I, I won't do it with y'all. No, no, man. We, we about to get into the final words for tonight because I think that CB Smith almost done for over there. So we're gonna get into the final words. The final thoughts and we're going to get get straight to the happy hour we have two or three more clips that we have for next week so we just roll those over but let's get into the final thoughts and we'll get into the happy hour and maybe we'll do it then who knows maybe we have a little bit more energy so i see how cb smith feel inside the happy hour so let's get to it ah uh, final thoughts everyone who wants to go first for me cb smith ain't gonna make it to the happy hour i don't even know what we've been talking about just get it out. We got. We talked about. Uh, you got the what's Russell Simmons daughter with the old sixty five year old. You had the modern, uh, the you know the modern women who are toxic, wanting all these things. Uh, you had Kamala Harris with the uh, NCAA bracket. You had Anton uh, Dam. You had the woman who didn't want light skinned babies. So there you go. That should be a nice recap for you. That was a nice recap, and all I heard you say was these modern women no matter which conversation topic we own they're a little bit dangerous you got to be careful how you move <laughs> cb smith out oh gosh you see what we dealing with man you see, you see what we dealing with <clears throat> yo so um i could talk about a lot but i'm going to talk about one thing right now hello america this is man-made media TV. Yes, yeah, shameless plug. You know, another thing we need to do, we need to plug the mouths of all these modern women who talking reckless out here. All these modern women who are out here talking about you too good for man. You don't need a man while being in men DMs, while being mad at your homegirl who got a man and while saying, man, it would feel real good to have a man while hating man. You are conflicted. You need to get a psychiatrist, sit down on the sofa, and if he's a male, he's going to go ahead, gently give you all the keys to success while he gets in your DMs and he gives you a psychiatric massage mentally and then physically. Was that disgruntled? Was it disre disrespectful? Yes. Should it happen? It happens all the time. So for all y'all women who saying y'all don't need a man and y'all go to y'all psychiatrist and you let your psychiatrist bag you down, that's because... You need to be open like that with your damn man and not a psychiatrist. And if you're open like that with your damn man, you can get greater results and he can show and you, he can see that you're a good woman. You have qualities. Was this a reckless conversation? It was. And this my message was sponsored by Man Media TV. I'm done. What are you talking about, man? 
<laughs> I, let's run it back. I was too reckless on that when I was talking crazy. Let's give me. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. I'm gonna be. On. Hold one so, second. Hold one um, second. Hold, hold one second. Your camera went blurry. Okay. All right. I'm back. I'm back. Look, I had a lot to drink tonight. When you have a lot of drinks, sometimes your your decision making can be um, off kilter. One thing my decision making is not off kilter about is the direction of of women in America. Leaving men is not a good idea. We need you and you need us. So we're speaking unity. So when you talk about relationships, I will say get mad, M-A-D, and make a deal. You got to be deliberate. You put effort into it. You both bring assets and you both leverage your liabilities and see what happens. Right. And so make a deal. Get mad. We love you. You love us. And if y'all didn't believe it, I'm going to tell you right now as a black guy, we love you all black women and we hope y'all love us back. That's it, Mr. Life. See, I was being all nice and then look. You were. <laughs> you were being nice. You were being super nice tonight, man. Let me get Now he about to be reckless. Uh oh, I don't trust him. I oh my camera don't went my camera went bad. Now you clear, you clear, you all clear. Right. <clears throat> we have pro black people telling other black people that they are no pro black that they are that they are not pro black be, just because they miss a few talking points. Those talking points is, well, slavery wasn't that bad. Well, hold on, let, that was totally wrong. Beep, let me just redo that. All right, let me, let me rerun that one. Their talking points are, slavery doesn't affect us now. You can be anything you want to be here, so go be it. it you being black is not stopping you from being great. You need to vote Democrat. All those things, if you... Man, I'm just saying, getting this one right, dog. All right. And, and see, you are giving me a whole ruckus with all of that. Yeah. You know, start over. Look. Start over to my editor. Start over. This is the new starting point. Okay? <laughs> starting point. <laughs> this is the new starting point, editor, when you release this. Pro, we have other. Being pro black is not all what it cracked up to be. We have pro-black leaders telling other black people that they are not pro-black simply simply because they don't have the same talking points. What are those talking points? Is well, you are a victim if you are black, and if you don't claim to be a victim, you are not pro-black. You must be a victim in order to be to be pro-black. You the man has done something to you, even though the man might not have done anything to you. It's just secondary. That's what it means to be pro-black. You got to find a reason to be a victim. And if you are not a victim, they're going to hold it against you. Me, myself, I am no longer a victim. So guess what? I am not pro-black. And even though I might reach out to plenty of black men, black women, and try to help them, ask them to help me, and try to empower everybody inside my circle to be great, and most of the people inside my circle is black, guess what? I'm not pro-black because I am not a victim. So here's to you, you shiftless and niggerly pro-black people that get mad at the people that's actually doing something for the people. F you too. Toodles. <laughs> ah, now that was a <laughs> I got that one right. <laughs> you did. We were reckless at that. This is what happens for everybody. I got that you know, one we'll right. talk about it. We'll talk about it in the happy hour. This is what happens when you drink for more than three hours unsupervised. Let's let's get we to that. Let's close for a out the show. Very long time. Let's close out the show, and we'll come back with the happy hour. You all stick around. This is a thirty minute. This is a thirty second closeout. We're gonna come back with the good, the bad, and the ugly. So make sure that you stick around, and yeah, just make sure that you stick around. Thanks for watching the Man Made Media Channel. And good night, bitches. Raised off in the struggle. Blessed to have my mother. Blessed to have my father. But nobody. Yo. Oh, man. Hey, we here. Look, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly. We talk about the recklessness of the show. We talk about the interesting of the show. We talk about.
the failures and the successes of the show. So for everybody who's still chiming in and tuning in, we appreciate y'all. Everybody was in the chat and the conversations. We appreciate y'all again. This is the good, bad, and the ugly. This is a full-fledged show, right? This is not just a whole bunch of talking heads. We get it in, we talk about it, and we make it happen. And we're glad to have y'all anytime. And we'll drop the link. Look, we're going to keep this thing rocking. Mr. Life, what, what we talking about? Let's go. Man, let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of tonight, man, because we know Tonight was a rough one. Tonight was real rough. <clears throat> I'm not sure if, sure if you noticed it. Did you check your text? Let me tell you. I looked at it. All I know is the internet was acting stupid. And I knew the I, I knew what you were talking about. We had to keep the energy <clears throat> pumping, right? So that was the bad. The energy started low. We had to bring it back up. So we repped out. And then the thing is, I don't know what's going on. Sometimes when people think it's your internet, it's a stream yard thing, right? At, at an occasion. It, there was a lag, right? I'm, I it rebooted a, a couple of times and all that. I'm like, what the heck is going on? It was not one I person. When it was out. everybody, that's <laughs> when there. I was like, okay, it, it's everybody. And so that was the bad that this internet we're dealing with because we had a major storm come through Florida. You know, hey, so that was the bad. The ugly, the whole crew couldn't last to the end, you know. But the good, we had Angry Vet chime in, jump on. It's good to have somebody who chimes in. That was definitely the good. The good was the content, as always. I like the topics of, topics of discussion. Uh, very insightful. We built upon them. So that was my good, bad, and the ugly. And, you know, we'll tighten it up, clean it up. But overall, I, I think it was a solid show. So it was a great show, 232. Man, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be completely honest. <clears throat> C.B. Smith was a little bit tipsy before he even got on. And uh, Mr. T gave us nothing tonight. He gave us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like pulling teeth. It was like pulling teeth, man. I'm looking like, oh, God, he is not t- not here tonight. So this wasn't one of our best shows tonight, but we still came. With, and, and we do what you do when you treat something like it's yard work. When you go out there and you get it done, you make it happen. And we like to be transparent with you all. If they don't, I will. And even though we've had... Even I, I think last week's show was far superior. We like we put on a real great show last week, and we call it the show just like a. This is not an open panel. This is a show where we used to get into different segments. We have different topics. We're just not talking about one thing. We try to make it keeping. We keep it moving quick, and you all wait till we used to get to where we want to go because it's going to even evolve even more from this right here than what you see. We are trying to get. We trying to turn into. We wanna. We are here to entertain you all, and we gonna. We have more things planned that you all don't even can't even phantom of what's going to happen on this show once we get to where we need to go. So if you know anybody that likes what we're doing, make sure you tell them to come like and subscribe. Cause the more people that we get, the more funding that we get, which means that we can go do more on the back end side of what the bigger of the vision purpose in the plan. Because we're trying to do something that probably never have been done on YouTube before by YouTubers. You probably saw people with a lot of money, finance do it, but you never have us, but you haven't saw anybody do what we're trying to do from a grassroots where we're trying to do it all on our own. <clears throat> yep, you missed the angry vet. The angry vet came and the angry vet came and gone. Yes, Claudette, you missed him. We had him up. We tried to keep him up. But we're trying to do greater things than what we're doing right now. We're trying to have diversified conversation all across the board. So, yeah, but the good today is we got through it. It was tough. It was hard. We made it through it. The bad is the storm came in and wiped everything out. And the ugly, man, the energy was low tonight. It was a, it was like pulling teeth. Was that transparent enough, sir? It was cool. I'm not knocking it. Look, I'm the good guy. Even though I'm bad, Jim, I'm the good guy. I let you say the hard, you have the hard discussions. No, did no, did he? Right? You have all the hard discussions. <sighs> Me, look, I'm the optimist, but I will say this though. Um, yeah, these YouTube streets they're different, but we can be playful, and we definitely can be um, insightful at the same time. And I think that's the happy balance when you got playfulness and insightfulness where it's saying like, we're not trying to just give you Ted talks where it becomes dead talks. We're trying to come with playful energy and give you insight that you can use in your everyday life. So that's always going to be the good. And we're going to stand on that and we love it. And so this is the happy hour. And guess what? We drink a lot of booze. So at least 
be mostly truthful because you get a brother on some booze, we gonna act right, and we ain't on Hennessy, which means we got we integral. Because if we just want to be on Hennessy all night, we gonna be disrespectful, cussing each other out, ready to fight. We like to drink the good stuff, so that's why it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because the liquor is good. We have ugly conversations, and um, you know, <laughs> the bad thing is we can't go longer, but we will. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we're going to start adding Viagra to our conversation so we can go longer and um, keep this thing. <laughs> we're going to keep this thing popping, man. Look, yeah, I love it, man. I understand so what you're, you're saying. Be out here on these, you, you're going to be out here on these YouTube streets? I should because I don't have the opportunity, but a hey, bad Gemini can't lurk every time, but I got a little juice to me. You clean cut, you swagged out. If you tired, I get it because everybody was tired, but I'll be lurking in these streets. Yo, appreciate everybody. This is Man Made Media TV. You see the cash app, like, subscribe, bring the girls out to being a man is good all the time and all the time being a man is good. Y'all know what it is. Peace. And we are out. Oh, let me run this commercial one last time. I'm gonna run this commercial <laughs> one last time because they, yeah, we gotta advertise. We, we gotta we, we gotta advertise what's coming. We up. building so up the new know? channel. Let's go. We building up the new channel. When you control a man thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. You don't have to tell him to stand here or go yonder. He will find his proper place and stay in it. You don't need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there's no back door. He would cut one for his own special benefit. His education makes it necessary. And that's why we thought it was necessary that we start this podcast, Man Made Men. This is where we will be interviewing extraordinary men that's doing extraordinary things throughout their community, their life, their family, with love, care, and passion. So join us as we embark on this journey of finding men all across America that's doing extraordinary things on man made men. Let's get it started. I have some pushback on that. You probably won't invite me back after this, but it's okay. We are the largest millionaires per capita in this country as black people. When the casket closed, what do you want to be remembered by and known for? So that that is, I don't fear much in life, but that is a big one. You will kill the horse. You cannot break it. It's the it's the only it's the only horse that cannot be broken. How you handle a Mustang is very different than how you handle other horses. So when you deal with a woman who is a force like my wife is, no, no, you'd rather fight with me than fight with her. Trust and believe that. <laughs> um, but I had to give her the reason. The reason it took time to build that trust, and I think we're at that point now where you know she's still an educated woman she got questions if i tell her i'm gonna do something like okay well, what does that look like i need to see this 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 and this and i sometimes I have to remind her i say look this is a spirit-led thing i can't explain it to you but my history thus far has proven that every time i've taken a direction mm -hmm. it has worked out for That's the it. best mm -hmm. can you trust it